if you want some advice, here's some advice. It was weird how it kind of got leaked a little bit earlier in the week. We grew up with movies like Super Mario Bros. You just look at him like he's a giant man. He's just like ridiculously great human being. I'm really excited for him. I think that the hype at the moment is super hype. What are you doing, Mark? All right, there it is. There it is. All right, everyone's unmuted. Everyone can hear everyone. How's it going? Hi. Hello, hello. Oh, dude. I literally, oh, as I go. as it transitions, it goes blurry again. My camera is so scuffed. Best stream ever. All right, let me try and fix like that. Like I said, dude, I, I think that's just you. Like I just said in the chat. <laughs> I met you in real life, and you're a little bit blurry. My camera's so, yeah. so broken. Being around you a couple times, uh, uh, Mr. GM, uh, you definitely can say you're a blurry person. I'm naturally blurry. All right, I'm just going to try to fix <laughs> that. It's, actually it's getting worse. How is it getting worse? Just put a hand like a little bit in front of you and it should be fine. I mean... <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay, I give up. I give up. We're just going to have to... Professional show, by the way. All right, let me just scrub the camera. <laughs> All right, best pilot ever. All right, welcome, guys. Still doing it. It's literally, I streamed for six hours today and it didn't do it once. We good? All right, we're going to stay, we're going to stay focused. All right, welcome, 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 everybody. Welcome to the very first episode of Tavern Talk here on the Method uh, channel. We've got Martin Creek and Jay, the mother freaking bard is here. How's, How's it going, going, everybody? Yeah, this is, this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. It's gonna um, be a, I think it's going to be a fun day, dude. It's going to yeah. be chill. Please, please accept scuffedness because, you know, it's our first time, guys. Everyone, no one, no one ever does well on their first time, let's be honest. That so, is true. Yeah, it's always a, it's always a story. Uh, it's always a story worth uh, telling. But anyway, Jay, I believe you have a friend with us today? Yeah. So, pl again, please excuse the scuffedness, but, you know, we, we do have a special treat for you guys. Um, we have a special guest uh, for our first episode here on Tavern Talk. Um, you may recognize his voice in certain games by a small indie company known as Blizzard Entertainment. Maybe you, maybe you guys heard of him, right? Anyone here heard of him? No? Eh, probably not. But uh, please welcome. He's an amazing, talented voice actor. He's been a very good friend of me. He is the voice of Roadhog in Overwatch. <sighs> Oh, okay. Please, I'm starstruck. Guys. I'm already starstruck. I said I was going to be starstruck before this, but like, I'm, oh, when I played Overwatch, I main Roadhog. This is just, yeah. Please. I'm going to refrain. What's mine is mine. Oh, okay. That's what guys, <laughs> please let me introduce the voice of Roadhog, Josh Petersdorf. Yo! What's up, everybody? Oh. An applause. I love it. Yeah, no, keep it going. Is it keep it going. <laughs> that wasn't my end, yeah. I, I, I'm also going. ready for production, you know. I got this. Absolutely amazing. It's great to be here on the Tavern Talk, hosted by Method, uh, bringing you the greatest talk from the taverns, from the apocalypse to the Alliance, back to the Horde, all the way. Okay, we're clipping that and we're using that for future shows. <laughs> <laughs> That's the intro forever. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. Love it. <laughs> Thanks for having me on, man. It's great. It's, this is the inaugural episode, so this feels really special to be a part of something like this. So I'm really stoked to be here. Thanks, guys. Yeah. You know, uh, my walls feel really bare uh, compared to you know, like Martin over here. Though, like it's like he has like literal, but he has like like lighting. So I'm like, okay, we got lighting. We just moved into the new place, so I'm still setting everything up. And uh, you know, and yes, you are very blurry, Mr. GM. You are very blurry. still blurry. <laughs> It's such a terrible camera. It, it's really scuffed, but I'm gonna fix it's, it. It's the One beer day. goggle filter. Yeah. See, I wanted it. to. I wanted to do the whole thing like this if Sko was watching. So I want to look freaking bulked. Like, you know what I, mean? <laughs> yeah. I was considering dropping down, and doing some like push-ups. Doing some push-ups, real good. Make yeah, a absolutely. change or anything. Yeah, I wouldn't make a change in me, anyways. <laughs> It's it's great to have you on, man. You know, it's been a, it's been a bit too since uh, you know we actually get to actually sit and talk too. But um, Oops. great to have you. Um, for a lot of you guys that also don't know, uh, Josh also voices uh, characters in World of Warcraft, uh, mostly from Legion. Yeah, um, I did Ursoc. A lot of people wiped a lot on Ursoc, you know. Uh, so I feel bad for everyone hearing that. And I did the Pop Tart boss. I did him. I did uh, old dad. It's on Wikipedia. I forget because when they pull us in, they they're like, "You're going to do all these characters," and you, it's hard to 
it's easy to forget the names, but Ursoc, and of course, if you were an Alliance Paladin, we did the mighty Maxwell Tyrosis was the class hall leader. Um, but uh, my horde, my horde claim to fame in Warcraft is in the Harbingers uh, shorts they did. It was the one explaining basically Gul'dan and how he was like uh, banished from the village originally and went to the throne of four elements and made the pact with the fell, etc. The chieftain leader who kicks him out was me. <laughs> <laughs> I am the catalyst for everything that happened. No. <laughs> how long in advance do you do it, though? Like, because so, uh, Legion came out what, in like 2016? So. Their turnaround is pretty quick. So I want to say for some of the stuff, <clears throat> it was at least a month in advance, right before, but some of it was right up to it was being released because the way I think, don't quote me on this as being official, but the way I think it works is when they lay the VO, it's some of the last stuff to go into the game because everything else is pretty much there in terms of mobs, quests, uh, items, and stuff like that, quest lines and cinematics even. Mm -hmm. It's already in there. So when they lay the VO, it's pretty much like the final polish on it. So a lot of the times it's really quick. You know, um, I want to say with Legion in particular, a lot of the, we did Jace Darkweaver also and did him the, I've sacrificed everything for the Legion. What have you given? That guy. And uh, fun story. <gasps> Scar's in here. Hold on. I got to go like this. <clears throat> here we go. So. Just like so, uh, you know, when I was doing push-ups <laughs> before the sessions, I realized that. Uh, no. But cool story. Uh, the person who did Jace Darkweaver, the vocal director, was Liam O'Brien, who is Illidan. So, like the first time uh, I came into the studio, I even did. I was like, "Oh, I am not prepared, huh?" And he was like, <laughs> "Get out." <laughs> So it was fun. So I'd say about like I want to say like three to three to three to six weeks probably. Oh, so in in advance. But how how long does it take when you're actually on site and you do the recordings? How many how many takes do you have to do for uh, let's say like each? Um, let's say a you boss, know, for instance. So like for a boss, we do a lot. Like I feel yeah. like they will ramp up like. And they, they tell you in the studio, they're like, we have the wonderful uh, director, Andrea Toyas, who does a lot of stuff. And the entire Blizzard team, they're on the phone, so they're listening. And they know with a boss, especially like Ursoc, that's going to be replayed over and over on multiple difficulties that the line really has to stick. It can't be something mediocre. It's got to be, wow, oh, it's got to be A+. plus. It's got to be top tier. So I'd say we give at least every line uh, at least five to eight takes for each individual line varying in levels of intensity and they take care of us you know we'll get a break if you ever need to relax or anything but like ursoc uh was very was very fun to do because there were some special lines that if you like a druid was in the raid and they had his weapon like he would say stuff that he wouldn't normally say right. that if a druid wasn't in the raid and so cool little easter eggs like that i thought was really fun um but he, he's a maniac. He's he's a maniac, and <laughs> he's gone on. So I hope he, he shows up again in the future. We'll see. More work for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, one of the things uh, I want to ask you, Josh, because a lot of people who may not know this too uh, know that you've actually been an avid WoW player for, for years since uh, yeah. Burning Crusade. Right? In yes. Vanilla, right? Oh, it was, so, uh, I was such an embarrassing player in, in Burning Crusade. I was the guy going into... SSC and like full merciless gladiator gear. Like, why aren't you taking me to the raid? What's wrong? <laughs> what? Yeah, I got what booted from SSC wrong? once. I know the feeling, man. Right? And I, yeah. I was, it was, it was a tough raid too. Like that was a very intimidating time when, because I mean, back, I remember just the actual scale of SSC. You'd walk in and you'd go under the waterfall and you'd have to do all this stuff. And then you get in there and it was like, this is a big deal. Um, but yeah, I started playing in Burning Crusade and, I played really a lot in Lich King. I got really hardcore. I downed Lich King on like 25, man. I was with a guild called Section 8 on, on Bone Chewer, the old server. We were old school. And um, and then I played a lot through Cataclysm. And then I took a break when like Pandaria came out, uh, but came back for Draenor. And then was in Legion. I was like, well, I got to play some more. So. <laughs> yeah. Now here's that. So Here's something for you, for you, Dan and uh, Martin, to learn something. Because uh, me and Josh found this out, uh, I think it was, what, like a year ago, right? When we were talking about being on Bone Chewer, right? Yeah. When we found out about that. That was, was funny. Um, so, Josh. Bone Chewer used to be a lot more populated, I feel like. Now it's kind of scarce. Well, like, it's listed as a new player it. server. 
They relaunched they? it as a, okay. new, as a new server. So Josh played uh, his pr uh, priest, and I played a, uh, a paladin. And my paladin's name was Super Pally on Bone Chewer um, at the time. Yes. And we, now he's like, and I would told Josh this. I remember he was like, like, that sounds very familiar. I knew this guy on a server I was on called Bone Chewer that I used to fight against all the time. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> what? <laughs> It's weird knowing that uh, knowing that you were playing on there, and that was such a it was like it's a different yeah. time. Everyone, I feel like during that age of WoW, had a lot of really fond memories of of the game, and it was a lot more posturing in in town. If you were in Ogremar, if you were in Stormwind, just standing with your armor, and people would walk by. Flexing, oh yeah. yes, total flex. You know what I mean? It was like, oh, you did Hajal. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yeah. It was a big deal because like. It was a big deal. Um, so there was, I had nothing but fond memories. Super Pally, though, was an absolute scumbag, and everyone was sure. <laughs> 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 just kidding. Oh, just kidding. Just man. How did you get the name Super Pally? That's so, like, that's pretty rare. I'd say that's a pretty good name. Oh, I spelled a specific way. That's why. Oh, I told oh. him, yeah, yeah. Like but, a weird uh, you know, or something. No, 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 no weird lettering. I just, it's just spelled differently. It was like with P, uh, it was P, you know, A L L I E. Like Pally. Like Oh, right. Pally, yeah. yeah. Pally. Pally. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? I, you know, people were afraid of Super Pally, okay? I thought it was a cool name at the time. Don't judge me. Yeah, I'm not going to judge. My name was, uh, my first tune was Plixar, like P L X, and then like Z uh, O R after. It's like Plixar. <laughs> <laughs> Plix. Yeah, Plixar. And uh, yeah, and we had a what, what the Hell Soar and stuff as well. We we're like a little group of friends and we just had stupid names. <laughs> yeah, getting anywhere in the game, but yeah, the only yeah the only name of my first character, which I still play now, but he did he has had a rename now. He's now Mechadan because he turned into a Mechadan because you know. Oh yeah. Uh, but no, um, it's my it was literally just my surname reversed. <laughs> like it's uh, that's how creative I am. <laughs> We were really creative X amount of years ago. We had good brain <laughs> flowing through us. I think my character's name was Razwar, and like all my characters were just uh, variations of it, like Razwarette or Failswar or Razina. <laughs> or it was, it, was, it was really now. Now I'm just you know. I think I, I, I recreated a paladin for 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 Legion to, to do the storyline. So and then I named it after my wife. So it was like Moon Meteor or something ridiculous. So there you go. Moon Meteor. Your wife. Moon yes. Meteor. Moon Meteor. Right. I was Amazing. like Moon. Uh, like, yeah. Why not? <laughs> That's what it's all about. So then I have an excuse when I'm playing. Like, babe, I'm I'm leveling your character. I love you. Oh That's yeah. Right. Doing this. <laughs> doing this for you. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. So ye, the um, the voice line thing. So how, like, uh, if I remember rightly, um, you did the you do Optimus Prime at Universal as well, right? Sorry, one second. I do. I do. I am Optimus Prime, and I have the wonderful uh, blessing and wonderful experience of being both Optimus Prime and Megatron at Universal Studios Hollywood. Amazing. So if you guys ever in Los Angeles, really? you come say hi to the Autobots. Or the Decepticons, you will most likely. There's a bunch of there's a group of guys that do it, but I'm there full time, so it'll probably be me. Uh, and I've had amazing experiences. I mean, we're talking some of these. We get a lot of Make a Wish kids at Universal, and Disney does too. And these are children, obviously, who've not seen the the best, brightest points in their life. So for them, Eddie, relax. So for them, basically. Uh -huh. Some of them will, will want to meet Optimus Prime, and we've had to have some really amazing experiences when I've got to share some experiences with the kids. Come here, then. Come here. Come here. Oh, Come here. he's so cute. He's an Ewok. He's an Ewok. <laughs> <laughs> he literally is, yeah. Right. Here we go. Here's the Ewok. Here he is. Do you amazing. get to dress up as well, then? Like, like so without cool. revealing too much of the magic on how it works, uh -huh. uh, I will say it's a multiple person job. There is a, a, a character who will be standing out there um, in the costume, and he's about, I want to say he's about 13 feet tall. And then I will be doing all the voice for that. So I'm watching and I'm listening to everything. That must be so, so hard. With the, it's the it's like thing, yeah. puppetry, right? It's like live yeah. puppetry and live improv and a little bit of theater all mixed together. And it's really rewarding um, because on one end with Optimus, you get to really tell the kids, I'm proud of you, how brave you are. You know, kids will come up with cancer and be in a wheelchair. And I get to tell everyone, you know what? On Earth, this kid's like everybody else, normal. But on Cybertron, they're a legend. 
We talk about them every day and how strong they are. And today is the day this child has returned home. Humans, clap your hands for the return of Commander. And it's like, (laughs) 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 it's really special to me and I really enjoy doing it. And then on the flip side, Megatron. I'm sure some of you guys have seen some of Megatron's videos chastising Fortnite online and other <laughs> and other things like that. Um, and that's like it's really good therapy. It's like if you're having a bad day, you get to go yell at the crowd, and it's really fun. So yeah, that is definitely awesome. good stuff. Because I was uh, I was there with uh, with Jay when you when you said oh hello Jay <laughs> oh boy <laughs> now Optimus Prime is firmly uh, an alliance player obviously it's like come on you know what I mean he clearly is and I would say Megatron's much more horde obviously but Jay had a had a fun video and I think it link would, it on it your would. Twitter or something later Jay if you want yeah. and people can check that out and. Tell him, Jay. Tell him. Tell him what happened. Oh, uh, it was oh, God. It tell was him so Optimus funny. Prime told you you were nothing. <laughs> 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 I thought it was funny because, like, unless people who followed like your channel or like knew you, like actively would follow your stuff, they they would know that that was you. So everyone thought when that when that video went up, like, I just randomly showed up during bliss you know over there it was because during blizzcon week like oh my god whoever is doing that voice is a, is a, is a, is a diehard blizzard fan because i like, just said for the alliance because I, I didn't even say anything to you about anything with world of warcraft i didn't have anything world of warcraft related on me and people were like what the heck oh you know optimus prime is for the alliance oh what the <laughs> hell is this and it went to like in the first day of post it went to like 50,000 views on twitter i think <laughs> it was like 50,000 views and then on facebook it had like 25,000 and then the funny thing is, like, no one knew for like the past two years because I we did the second time. Remember, because I came and saw you again in uh, in May um, when uh, I was visiting uh, the Blizzard campus, and uh, we did another video. But then it was the thing came. The truth came out officially at BlizzCon this past year because you finally told everybody like what you do, and everyone was messaging me. That was Roadhog, and you didn't tell anybody. Like, did you or or did you like? Did you know it was Roadhog? Did you did you know that that was Roadhog? That was you yeah, know, I had people uh, come up there? in Mercy backpacks and all sorts of Overwatch gear, and I'll just flat out say like that. you know. You know the greatest character is Roadhog, right? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> they kind of look back like. Really, bro? Like, are you? <laughs> I'm like, absolutely. I have no shame. I will completely self-promote. That's fine. It's <laughs> that too. video was really cool to do. Uh, I will send it back to Ogremar in a box. I think after the Wait, you, you know, was, if I can, I want to tell that one story. When when we were leaving, uh, it was BlizzCon 2018. You had you just finished your panel with uh, with Geek and Sundry. Oh, <laughs> and at yeah. this time, guys. Josh had his panel, uh, right? Darren DePaul, Matt Mercer, everyone was on that thing. My God, like Josh's face was completely shaven, like so he had no beard, and it was one of the things like you couldn't believe it when you saw his face. So um, I remember uh, like the person who was in charge, like asking you, like, "Hey, do you want us to have someone escort you?" You're like, "No, I'm with my boys. It's all good." (laughs) (laughs) That was was fun. We're walking over. We were walking over to his to his car there, or his car's his car's parked. Out, and this one guy shows up, and this guy's wearing a Roadhog T-shirt. And he comes over randomly. He's like, he's like, hey, you know, aren't you aren't you uh, Jay the Bard? I'm like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Can I get a picture with you? And he asked Josh <laughs> to hold the camera and take a picture. <laughs> and, yeah, you love telling that story, Jay. <laughs> I bet he does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, heck, yeah, I do. Heck, yeah, I do. And then uh, he was like. He's like, uh, he'll, he'll, Josh is like, yeah, man, Jay's a great guy, isn't he? It's like, yeah. And then Josh does a little quote, like a little, because like, oh, I love your shirt. He does the, the, one of the Roadhog quotes. And the guy's like, wow, I sound pretty close to like Roadhog. <laughs> and all of our yeah. friends are just sitting there just laughing their butts <laughs> off. Like, this guy has no idea. You know what happens you know to me more often than not is when Jay, was, Jay is, is, is privy to this. Um, when we're playing Overwatch... Which I play, I play a lot. I'm, I consider myself the best in the cast. Um, <laughs> when we're playing, I'll troll people. Well, I wouldn't call it troll, but I'll be like, "Hey, you wanna, you wanna hear my 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 soldier? I've got you in my sights. I'm not your dad." And they're like, "Oh, that's pretty good." <clears throat> I'm like, "You wanna hear my Winston?" They're like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Oh, by my calculations, I'm a real animal." And then I go, "Oh, do, do you wanna hear my my Roadhog? I think it's my best." They're like, sure. And I'm like, "We're all animals." And I'm like, "Oh, your Winston is clearly better." <laughs> <laughs> That happens all the all the time. That happens all the time. Like, Every all the time. time. All it's, the time, dude. 
You know, my my favorite thing though will always be the uh, the Chad doing the impression of you on Tom Street. <laughs> Shout out it's to a Chad. Tough voice to do. Roadhog is a tough voice to do. And I've, I've, if you want some advice, here's some advice. In theater, they teach you to project from your stomach and your diaphragm so that you can reach the back seats of the theater. And Roadhog is very similar. There's obviously a little bit of Dr. Claw from Inspector Gadget in there, okay? But don't do it in your throat. Do it in your chest. And if you do it in your chest, not your throat, you'll sound better. Just... There you go. I bet there's a lot of people watching now just like trying like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> throughout the world 357 people just echo yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I got the urge to I was like hmm okay that's how you do it that's, I'm always I'm myself. always flattered that people enjoyed it to begin with so thank you guys for all the support much love much love but Warcraft was the true dream when we did when I got the because Overwatch came first and then they called me in to do Legion afterwards and I was like I've been playing this game for so long. <laughs> My friend abandoned me in Astronaut when I was a level 22. And four months later, I made it out into the Stone Talon Mountains at level 31. And, <laughs> <laughs> and ever since, I have been a fan. And they're like, that's great. Get in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a dream come true. And Jay now... Is has been immortalized in the game as well, and Jay the Bard exists. It's true. It's oh, true. yeah, I think you the told tavern me about that, in Borelis. So Jay, explain to us uh, what did it feel like when you won the BlizzCon talent competition and got immortalized in the game? You gonna put me on the spot like this? Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I think. Well, I cried in front of like 45,000 people in the audience and I like a million watching at home. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. I thought it was touching. I thought you did such a great job. And it was, you could tell that you really deserved it, that you really loved it and that it meant a lot to you. And I thought you that know, was really cool. It, well, it's one of those things like this, right? Because like I grew up. You know, playing my very first game I owned was Warcraft One because uh, I didn't have a console. My older brother had the console at the Sega Genesis, so I'd go to my friend Philip, whose house was like right across the street from me. And I'd go over there and play Warcraft. His parents bought me my own copy for my birthday, so I kept um, playing. You know that throughout the years. So to kind of be where I was at, I remember um, you know even just being there at BlizzCon was it was it was a crazy experience. You know. Um, and the thing was, I went there. I went there alone. Uh, I didn't know anybody there, right? Uh, so it was kind of, uh, it's kind of, you know, awkward because I didn't know, I didn't have anybody to really hang out with. But uh, I met a, you know, a group out there named Club Tito's. Shout out to them that were very uh, welcoming and such, and uh, helped me kind of get my confidence going. Um, and when I went on stage, and you know, when, when they announced my name, I actually thought I was like, "Wait, is there someone else? Was there a fifth performer <laughs> out of the four of us?" <laughs> I was like, "There's no way it's me." And uh, I. I I still can't believe it. And I, when they announced that I had a character in game, like they were telling me, they were telling me this. Uh, they told me it was a uh, Gary Plattner, um, who is the senior background artist for World of Warcraft at the time at Blizzard Entertainment, and he's still there. He got promoted recently. He had a really amazing panel these past two BlizzCons. Um, he reached out to me right after the performance. He's like, "Hey, we want to talk about putting you in the game because it's already it was already going online. There was a." change.org thing for it and everything and it was going on twitter um and he's like here's my card you know let's you know let's talk about pushing like putting in the game i reached out to him i never heard back from him really other than like hey come back to me another time so the day that the patch went out for you know for, uh sorry not patch but the um but the for ptr boralis was up people can explore boralis um my friend's like you might want to you might want to go log in to the ptr i'm like well who am i mr gm i don't log in a ptr <laughs> <laughs> love you Dan <laughs> but I, I remember I was just kind of going around like oh this is really cool and um, I remember seeing the character who's originally I was outside and I was like no no this can't be it's pretty insane and I remember I was uh, live streaming and I started fucking like losing my mind I was like crying I was just like ma get the camera <laughs> <laughs> they gave him a but, beanie uh, too like that was that was clutch the beanie you know what i the mean beanie, amazing yeah. medieval, like medieval beanies are, are in dude like, <laughs> medieval beanies by the way ian 
Ian, remember, Ian, you said you were going to give Beanie's transmogs in this damn game. I want my transmogs. Um, but yeah, man, it was it's an experience that I still can't put to words at times. I mean, it's still a small thing for, I'm, I'm sure some people are like, oh, you're just an NPC. Yeah, but it means a lot to me. Well, we got to corner Johnny Cash this past BlizzCon, and we got to ask him about the name of the tavern, which we thought was strangely coincidental. Uh, because the tavern that Jay is in is called the Hops, Line, and Sinker Tavern. And Roadhog is known for the Hook, Line, and Sinker. Mm. And we asked him, <laughs> does this have any correlation? He gave us a vague answer. It was like neither confirming nor denying. Because he was like, well, you know, in fishing, like in beer, it's like Hops, Line, and Sinker. We're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> But uh, that was fun when we got to, and that was another time when we were walking through and Johnny stopped Jay. I was like, hey, aren't you Jay the Bard? I follow you on Twitter. He didn't ask for a picture this time, but I was like, <laughs> I was like what about me, Johnny? Put me back in the game. <laughs> oh, gosh. Thanks. Thanks that so was much. fun. That was fun. That was a good time, bro. That was a good time. I want you to do some lines for your uh, your character, Jay. That'd be sick. Oh. Or like every time, uh, like every expansion, you just pop up somewhere, just like, like Waldo. singing a song, right? Yeah, he needs to be there <laughs> strumming that lute, singing a song, yeah. making us feel better. Oh, well, that would be kind of morbid if you're in Shadowlands, because you know something would have happened to you. <laughs> I, I, I just no. Here's the thing, dude. Here, it's, there was a running joke uh, within my community at the time where, like, they said, like, "Oh, the real old god is I'm actually an old god. Like, my character is just an old god. Just no one knows it." Singing sweet <laughs> to everybody, and like you just morph into these tentacles and burst out of your neck, like "Welcome to the yeah. Nightmare." <laughs> but, uh, speaking, but speaking of voice lines, to kind of ask this: um, Do you have any like favorite voice lines you've done from any of the Blizzard characters, like from like Roadhog, maybe some of the ones from like your uh, from the Legion characters you did? You know what? Like, like the Maxwell Tyrosa stuff was really fun because. We got to do the scene with Tyrion, and and it was kind of like I remember reading the script and being like, "Wait a minute!" Like, and there was a scene at Uther's tomb, which is like <clears throat> really deep. Like, I was that player who would run through Western Plaguelands and stop and like kneel before the tomb. Like every time I was in there, it'd be like, "We miss you, Uther, wherever you may be." And uh, sorry for the Alliance heavy references here, guys, but. <laughs> 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 the three but, people that still play Alliance. I know, right? To be fair, it's true. Yeah. I know. Um, but it was that was really fun. So all of the Maxwell Tyrosis stuff was cool. And then I, I remember, like, the first time you meet yourself in game, it's like it's surreal. I would just click on myself, like, and hear them get irritated and get the pissed off lines and everything. And right, see, even Sko thinks Uther's Tomb in Western Plaguelands was pretty epic with some World Warcraft three memories, right? So it's it's a pretty epic spot. So to even have a scene with Uther was super, super cool. And I thought that was really neat. And then the whole Ashbringer storyline about the Paladin weapon and everything was was really cool. So I hope we see more of Uther in the future. Everyone wants some more we, Uther. We are seeing right? Uther in uh, Shadowlands. So, yeah. So there you go. I'm, I'm very cautious of when I say I don't want to. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> no, <laughs> drag it out of him. I know uh, nothing. <laughs> I know nothing. Um, and then, like doing, you know what was a fun boss was the the pop tart boss, uh, crushed and crampled, stab and trample. He was fun. To do. <laughs> he was fun in the dad tree who had like the dad bad bun. Oh, oak heart. Oak heart. <laughs> right. My bark is worse than my bite. <laughs> like stuff like that was really fun to do too. Um, I mean, how do you pick, right? The Jay Starkweaver sessions were fun, like I mentioned, because Liam O'Brien was there. So you have like the quintessential, you know, Illidari demon demon hunter himself directing you. And I was so flattered to be able to do that. That was a really fun quest too, all the Jay Starkweaver stuff. And and Jay Stark, we were because I was a priest. He plays into I think it's the disciplined priest. He would help you get your your staff in Legion. And there was a quest when he like went to the uh, Maxwell visited the, the the class hall too. So it was really weird how that all intermingled. The priest, I was so tickled. I thought that was I fanboyed really hard on that. I was like, this is this is sick. This is really fun. 
That's so awesome. I did have a kind of pulling it back to earlier. I've been, <laughs> I've been waiting for my moment to ask this question. Have you ever met Peter Cullen? Yes. You have. Yeah. I have. And I have an Optimus Prime tattoo on my arm. Oh, wow. So, okay. like, my arm is, like, half Optimus Prime, like, circuits and everything in here. Uh, yes, go. I need to do some more push-ups. It's fine. But uh, here's a cool story. I met Peter, and he's really a nice guy. And the first, I've met him twice, three times. The first time I met him when he was granting a Make-A-Wish at Universal Studios, and the child had asked to go on the ride with Peter, like, was specific. So they, he was an older kid, so he was kind of in on it. But Peter and the child walked up to Optimus, and I got to tell him, you've been with me for 30 years. You haven't let me down yet. I don't think you ever will. And he was like, oh, he said something to us, and I was like, yeah, I'm very happy with that. I can die happy now. And so the second time was at a con. Um, they snuck me into his room real quick, and they're like, "Hey, Peter, this is Bob. This is Josh. You know, and he does the voice at Universal, and he was so kind. He said, you guys do a great job over there.' And I know he was worried in the beginning because when you take someone's likeness and you mimic their voice, you're always going to be worried. Like, are they going to do it right? I don't want these guys uh, messing it up and making it not authentic to the character and you know, doing silly stuff that maybe Optimus wouldn't do. To hear him say that was really cool. And we took a great picture. The third time I met him, was he was with another man who some of you might know by the name of Frank Welker. And Frank Welker, to me, is like a god. Like, that's who I look up to the most in voice acting. Uh, he is basically Ray from Ghostbusters, Fred from Scooby-Doo. He's also Scooby-Doo. And he's uh, pretty much... Any, he's the hyenas in Lion King, he's Slimer in the real Ghostbusters, he's a million and a half voices. Frank Welker is Megatron in, in Transformers, he's the opposite of Peter. And so a lot of the times I joke, like, you get to have, you meet these people and you have a wonderful experience and you take this really shitty picture and you're like, man, that picture is <laughs> terrible, right? But the experience was awesome. But with Frank, I took this amazing picture. But I was like a babbling mess when I met him. I was like, I love you. I think you're amazing. <laughs> One day, I just hope to be as impressive as you in the voice acting community. And blah, blah, blah. And he's like, well, thanks. Thanks a lot. Well, welcome aboard. I'm like, you don't know how much this means to me. I really just, you know. <laughs> if you put your foot on the ground right now, I will lick and kiss that right now. And he was like, I, it's good security. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> But we had this really like maybe it was more awkward for me. He probably you know doesn't remember because he meets a lot of people. But then we took this amazing picture, and it's on my Instagram somewhere uh, deep deep down a couple months ago or a year ago because I think it was like last March that I met. And the picture is amazing. It's me and like Peter Cullen and Frank Welker on my side. We all look like we're best friends, and <laughs> everything's going great. But my own personal memory from it was was very tarnished. So yeah, I have met Peter, and he's a class act. Shout out Peter Cullen for being so cool. He's also, I don't know if you guys know this, Peter is also Eeyore in Winnie the Pooh. Yep, he is. <laughs> That's true. That. And, Some uh, people may not have known. Peter Cullen was also the original, like he did the original narration for the first World of Warcraft trailer. Really? Yeah, it was. there's a there's a video on YouTube, you can see it, where he's promoting it. It was like when, uh, when they think they first announced it. I didn't know that. Now, that's something that I like to know, because now it, it's, it's funny how the universe is all meld together, right? So, Peter's a class act. Good dude. Uh, good guy. Real nice man. Now, one of the things uh, that I want to ask you, Josh, and um, I'm sure a lot of people would like, like to know this, too, is this. So, like, I think one of the coolest things with, with Overwatch is, like, you guys, uh, all the voice actors for you guys have really actually go out and hang out together. You know, I've obviously been blessed enough to go on those opportunities and see how everybody is um one that was it in i think it was in rolling stones called you guys the beatles of voice acting how does that feel to be compared in such a way where because people see you guys always going to conventions together and you know obviously you, you know you don't really work with each other in the booths because you're working in separate booths the, most of the time but like how does that feel to kind of be like seen in that status so to speak i mean it's it's flattering. It's an honor. And I'm still the voice acting industry is a tight knit group of individuals, men and women, and who all work together because we love what we do. And we love being able to see the smiles on people's faces when they enjoy the craft 
and they enjoy the memories and the hard work that goes into it. Voice acting is a lot of hard work and it's very lonely. All of Overwatch was recorded solo. Um, I don't think there was a single scene that was recorded together with multiple people in the room. So all of us recorded it individually. So to get praise that it's that we feel such like such a collective and that the group can you know to be compared to like legends like that is out of my mind i don't i don't believe it for a second but it's flattering and it really is testament to how strong the community is and how strong the people who play the games are because that's what it really boils down to is the community and these people people who enjoy overwatch people who enjoy uh, Warcraft, the people who enjoy Hearthstone, this whole community of games uh, uh, that Blizzard and other companies have created is where the true. That's why you do it is because you want you know you want to get get smiles on people's faces you know and, and I think that uh, for people like Darren DePaul, um, he's such an amazing talent and that's Reinhardt um, and he's so many other things in Warcraft he's in star wars he's in destiny he's in so many major franchises a lot of the other guys like keith silverstein uh, are huge voices in anime and you know the list goes on in turn like you know and, and we have jennifer hale as ash who's in commander shepherd among a million other things and anjali bamani uh symmetra is a extremely talented on-screen actress like she's in tons of stuff on tv like she's constantly like she'll joke she's like i'm always someone indian or a, a doctor on television you know because she's always she's always booking and uh to just be in the same group as these people is truly flattering you know like an amazing town like charlotte chung and 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 the list goes on you know you can just keep going on it was an honor to be even mentioned in that. And like the picture they have, I was so embarrassed in that picture because everyone's like very happy. And I'm like throwing up like squad goals <laughs> in the, in the Rolling Stones picture. I have like my arms crossed like, what up? <laughs> Just finished, uh, you know, smoking out. Like, no, no. <laughs> it's like, everyone looked really professional and I'm on the ground like, Ooh, you know, but it was it was really impressive, you know. And even my um, the cohort Junkrat Chris Parson is is an amazing talent. And everyone does stuff that you'd never believe. Like there was a movie that came out uh, maybe a year and a half. How to meet a Latin lover, and <laughs> here's a <laughs> Junkrat did the the trailer for it, not in the Junkrat voice, but it's like how to meet a Latin. And that was like him. It was Chris. <laughs> Dude, and he was also trip. like, he was in Ringo and he speaks fluent Spanish. Um, so there's, everyone has like a secret kind of a secret weapon. So the Rolling Stone article was incredible. And, you know, let's not forget people like Matt Mercer also who are part of the group. And I don't know, man, it seems unreal to, the, to this day. It still seems surreal to me. And we're just constantly keeping going because that's the way this industry is. You just want to keep going and keep making cool stuff. And, some of the most recent stuff I did, other than WoW, was I did uh, Rage 2. I was the big villain in that guy named General Cross and uh, did some motion capture for that game. So that was, it, it just goes on. You know what I mean? The beat marches on. So. Yeah, I find with voice actors as well, like, do you do, you do a lot of, lot of uh, like, motion capture for the, the characters as well? Or how much, how much you do? Obviously with WoW, like, you wouldn't do that because WoW doesn't have stuff like that, but. The reason I was shaved that BlizzCon was because of that General Cross role, and I couldn't talk about it for like months. So they're like, "Why did you shave your beard?" I was like, oh, it's, it's a project, you know." Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I, yes, I feel like motion capture is becoming more and more important in games like The Last of Us with like Ashley Johnson, Troy Baker, and them. They're really honing in on the performance of it, and they're really dedicating themselves to the role. And motion capture only helps accentuate that fact. And it's a new era of games when um, a lot more self-tapes uh, for auditions are coming around, it seems like, and they want to see your face. And um, it's also the, 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 the magic. So I'd say it happens a lot more frequently uh, nowadays. <clears throat> I haven't done a ton of motion capture, uh, but the stuff that I have done has been, it's, it's wild. They put the, the graph all over your face, the dots, you wear this huge 
helmet like thing and then when every time the take starts there's like a built-in computer on like a belt that you wear around your waist that kind of controls the battery um and the actual recording that's going to be sent to the animators to animate the face and so every time it starts it's like you feel like you're in the matrix you're like a machine i'm like i'm more a machine now than man like <laughs> so, it's fun but it's definitely different um it's different because you you get to really animate more of sometimes you don't realize you're a good voice actor i feel like will basically automatically your facial expressions will kind of go with it so it's not too much of a stretch to ask uh, for the motion capture, but for some people, I could assume that it might be a little bit different and a little bit jarring because you're so used to kind of maybe just focusing and getting the sound out that now you're like, okay, I have to get the sound and the look out now, which is something that that is definitely a skill and it's something that needs to be practiced and something that uh, I encourage anyone who's into uh, voice acting or who wants to try and become a voice actor to master because I always tell people there's two words in voice acting. There's voice and no, oh, sorry. And acting. <laughs> <laughs> there's voice. There's, <laughs> there's voice and acting. Okay. So, so you gotta do both. So yeah, um, it's it's a multifaceted skill set. Is there a lot of people around with the uh, uh, with with emotion? Like, uh, or do you really get put on the spot as opposed to just being like in a box where you uh, just do the voice lines? So there's different kinds of voice. There's motion capture. There is motion capture when it's strictly capturing your face. And in those situations, yes, you're like in the studio box. And it's a little bit harder because it's just you and the microphone. And you have kind of like a, uh, a camera that has like kind of goes out to here and captures oh, yeah. your face. And then there's more physical voice acting. And like when you're in kind of like a studio space, when you're wearing the entire suit and you have the motion balls that detect your movement all over the spot, like uh, the new Avengers game uses a lot of that and stuff like that. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's definitely. And in, I think that uh, in the when you're in the bigger space, you are doing co scenes with people. There will be two people acting, and maybe even if there's a monster in the scene or props, that there will be actual props that you can pick up. Uh, uh, so I feel like with those, they're very different, but they're very much the same because in both of them, you're very into the role and every little bit about your face is captured in your body movement. So on one take, you may nail the vocal characteristics of it, but the director may be like, that's great. Give it to me exactly the same, just a little bit more physicality so we can animate it better. And the, the trick of animation is um, the animators who work tireless hours to animate all this stuff, they want as much footage as they can get. They want as much of you as they can get. So they can meld. I mean, if you did four takes, they can take a roll from take one, a head cant from take two, something else from take three, and so on from take four. So they can kind of mishmash everything together to make the scene as powerful as it can be. For, for must, some of the must feel more alive, just motion capturing. You must feel like really alive just being there and actually acting instead of uh, like just doing the voice, like, especially Absolutely. doing it with other people as well, I guess. Yes, it's, it's a lot more physical. Absolutely, it's a lot more physical, it's a lot more demanding um of of your body uh as well so i yeah. think i think that that's going to be interesting in the years to come to see how far that goes you know because there'll always be 2d animation which is voices but it's you know some of these like the last of us i keep going back to because they really nailed some of the emotional you know connections there and you really feel it in that acting yeah. tip my hat to all those guys they did a great job so I got a question. <laughs> All right. I was just doing some stalking of your uh, Twitter, and I found something that's really piqued my interest. Oh God! And uh, I'm a bit of a wrestling mark, right? <gasps> and what on earth is fantasy super cosplay wrestling? Oh my God! Fantasy FSCW. <laughs> FSCW Fantasy Super Cosplay Wrestling is a wrestling federation that around the country, mostly big cons on the east coast and we have amazing talent I'm in so this federation impressed. so basically what it is it's like we have it's cosplay wrestling it's professional wrestling like aew or wwe mm -hmm. and we have every character is represented like skeletor uh wreck it ralph deadpool uh rogue storm 
Ultimate Spider-Man. Uh, and then they had like this past Christmas that was like, anyone see that claymation Rudolph, the red nosed reindeer? There was like the miner with the pitchfork. They had him. <laughs> and so it's really sky's the limit with this. Um, the, the champion currently is, is low key uh, played by an amazing wrestler called Jude McKenzie. And Alex Chamberlain is, is Skeletor. And we've had some huge stars from AEW, like Chris Statlander did rogue mm -hmm. uh, a couple events. Big swole was uh, the storm. She was heavily featured. And uh, Leva Bates, what the librarian on AEW, Blue Pants, uh, <laughs> she was Jinx from League of Legends. So they had a ton of uh, characters, and there are two wrestlers that are also uh, Junkrat and Roadhog. Uh, uh, we have Aaron Agony, who plays Junkrat, and uh, Big Zane, uh, who plays Roadhog. And both of those guys are great. So I've escorted them out to the ring. I've won a championship before. Okay. Uh, in the Toxic Championship, and I lost it seconds later to the Toxic Avenger. Barry Bostwick has <laughs> has come from uh, Rocky Mountain Horror Picture Show, and most recently this past weekend in Richmond, uh, Flash came and defeated uh, his arch nemesis in the ring and helped out Star Lord, who is played by Caleb Conley. And Caleb's been in Impact Wrestling and has featured a lot in NWA Powers. So for all the pro wrestling marks out there, check out FSCW. I am the official commentator with guy hutchinson and our friend mark and we and also our, our another man by the name who wrestles under the name Batroc. so <laughs> we have a lot of fun i recommend checking it out i love it because like I'm, I'm assuming you just like go to conventions and kind of do stuff like that like just put yes. on a show and i think for like yes. a casual viewer i guess just seeing like deadpool in a wrestling <laughs> ring is, like even if you don't even like wrestling it's just like hilarious like it's just... well they have like the they have funny stuff like the dova key will come out and uh he'll do the dova thrust and then they do they have a wrestler Malik, who comes and just glitches the game will just hit you with low low kicks the entire match and like it's <laughs> awesome. we, we have a lot of fun with it and uh there's another wrestler milo beasley does this peter parker the spider-man like he's like an aging middle-aged crisis spider-man so he comes out and like eats pizza it's it's really fun galaxy con puts on a lot of the events and uh, that are tied to FSCW and they have a YouTube channel and everything. So you can check them out there. It's, it's a lot of fun to watch. I'm so impressed. And I can instantly tell how interesting you are when you mention things like AEW and everyone's like, what on earth is that? <laughs> what on earth is he talking Josh, about? Josh, when are you going to make your debut? You need, this is what you need to do. You need to go reach out to Sko and be like, Hey, Sko, you and him make a tag team. <laughs> oh, yeah. make a tag team. <laughs> tag team. The bearded brothers of the North and East come together. It's <laughs> the Welshman and the Calabrian. <laughs> um, I, I I met Sko before. I was with Jay, and we we had a good we had a good we had a good message. And Sko was a nice guy when we met him. Um, and I, I think did I meet him twice? Was did we meet him again this past year or? We met him by the fountain outside. I think I, I saw him. It was, it was twenty. It was twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen. Two, two years ago. <laughs> two years ago. Yeah. And yeah. Big Sco chastised me for being a member of the alliance. So I. <laughs> it he, was fun. He was a member of the alliance. <laughs> Still waiting for those sub sounds. Sub See, look, he has yeah. not forgot. <laughs> so I can I can get those out to you, no problem. Now that we. <laughs> Now that we're we're intermingling, I'll I'll send something out. Just let the guys know what you need, and we'll make it. I, I just I just remember when he was like, you know, you want to come hang out with us, you know, and you're just like, oh, I'm on the lines, and he was just like, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm Dude, really sorry to hear that, bro. Like, <laughs> I think we all play alliance. Do you? Yeah, I, I, I currently alliance, do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, j I just came out of a raid before uh, going on the show. Jay, Jay has to play Alliance yeah. so he can stand by his yeah, character. No, I have to, yeah. Can I feel like I played Alliance for so long. I'm so... I'm I, like I, I when classic came, I tried to roll a horde, and I have never really played a lot of the horde, so I literally didn't know where to go. I was like, I, I don't know what zones to do next. Like I'm such a blue blooded alliance freak that I have no idea what to do, you know. But hey, respect a method for always being on top of the charts and always, you know, setting the bar for for excellence and giving other guilds uh, and organizations someone to chase after too. So don't think it goes unnoticed by all of us. Absolutely. Yeah. so there it is class acts class act you guys are so keep it up how far did you get on classic <laughs> well i have i have a wife now and i have <laughs> a young daughter and i have 
So I, I was not able to put as much time in this go around as I did. I think I made it to level like 41 and I was, I was, you know, I was like masochistic. So I rolled a priest again. (laughs) It was like, I don't know why. I don't know why I wanted to do that to myself. And my poor friend, I'll shout him out. Nausea was a grand marshal back in vanilla on bone chewer. And he boomed through as a rogue, just blew through the entire, uh, content and classic and he completely out leveled me and i i think i ruined it for him because i was like you gotta wait for me bro and he's like you're (laughs) never gonna be 50 bro you're gonna take forever and so i've (laughs) tailored off i came back to retail uh when the new raid came out visions and uh leveled up my paladin at least so i got my pally up to max level and did the uh heart of azeroth so i maxed out my artifact necklace or whatever and, and did all that stuff just so I, I always try and come see the new content as it releases yeah. in retail mm-hmm. um but yeah it was just you know how it is it's a lot of time and i work full time to so uh, at the park and as a voice actor and to get those health benefits to make sure that the baby and mama are taken care of and so i just didn't have enough time to put into it but uh i think i should but in the next oncoming week slash months or two i'll probably venture back and i do want to try and and come to see try and make maybe a uh, an aq raid later in the day or something it'll probably take me months to get gear for that or at least try and do bwl or i don't know if i'll be able to make it to nax but you know i don't yeah. i don't know that's a good question to ask i don't know if nax will be as gated as it was uh in vanilla this time around Depends because so many people you know what i mean yeah. so many because there's like a literal attunement you need like mage weave cloth or something to get in or it's something weird it, right it, I forget, it, so. it's one of those weird things where like back in the day no one really knew what it was like what the attunement was or anything like that but now like it's like with the aq war effort you could literally right. stock up everything because yeah. we already right. know what it needs everyone and knows what it needs i think that's kind of the it's weird doing a rerun it's like watching a rerun of your favorite show but you get to kind of you get to have a fresh head start on it and i think that uh classic is really cool and i'm hoping that burning crusade servers come and lich king and so on and so forth the whole thing right and i'm also hopeful that they that they say hey look if you want to stay in classic here's a classic server that's going to stay classic it'll never get upgraded if you want a burning they have to it would make sense for that right and that they'd be like so that the game is it becomes more of a preservation you know what I mean? Of so many, so much of the the media nowadays is all digital media and physical media. You know, I think Warcraft Three Reforged was a good example of that. How the old client just doesn't exist anymore, and mm-hmm. so it's all been updated. And I think a lot of people hold a special nostalgic part that they kind of want to be able to dip back into their own the old realm, so to speak. You know, mm-hmm. I know maybe some of us have like VHS tapes in our garage of all stuff, and we think one day maybe we'll watch it, and maybe one day we'll show our kids and. They don't get touched until then, but that one day is what we're waiting for. So, yeah. I swear, I hope it keeps still, going. Still have VHSs just in their living room, just like plugged in, still just for that that day. When you right? Do you see that old video? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or, or I, I, when I'm so old, not to give my age away, but I remember, like, I, wa- I would tape Empire Strikes Back on TV. So, like, I watched Empire Strikes Back like a thousand times, and I'm used to like commercial breaks during the movie so when i watch the whole thing normally i'm like oh this is where the commercial come you know my <laughs> parents for, for whatever reason like there's a like i would go to the library and rent that movie it was my favorite movie and they just didn't buy it for me for god knows what reason but i also wasn't allowed to see the he-man movie as a child and i was a big he-man cartoon fan because it was it was too violent I was told so oh. thanks mom have you seen thanks it for showing I have, and it's it's freaking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Dolph Lundgren's horrible accent in that. It's like all of his lines. <laughs> we must stop Eternia, the sorcerer. <laughs> <laughs> so it's so bad. It's so good. Speaking of some of these like other IPs from games and, and, and movies, um, is there maybe a specific like IP that you'd want to be a voice in? Like, that's like that's like like one of your goals. <sighs> I mean, everyone would want to say. You know what? I'm kind of living one of my goals right now, doing the. Uh, it's always been a dream to be a part of professional wrestling. I've been a fan. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I've been a fan for years, and it's been to be able to meet these these people backstage and get to see how the business works was really cool for me. Um, really cool. But in terms of like IPs, let's say like Ghostbusters, you know, or of course maybe even Star Wars, and 
without breaking any NDAs or anything, I have uh, I've auditioned for some Star Wars parts in the past, and obviously I've never booked it. But the fact that I get to audition for some of these parts lets me know that I'm doing something right. My agency is Atlas Talent, the same people who represent amazing talent like uh, Darren DePaul, to throw his name out, and uh, Erica Lindbeck, who is Jesse in Final Fantasy VII Remake. And so I'm with some really high-ranking, talented people. So the fact that I even get to throw my name into the hat of consideration was, uh, was really cool. Like Masters of the Universe, they just announced, speaking of He-Man, the new show, and... I know a lot of my voice actor friends were laughing because a bunch of us gave it a shot and we all auditioned for it and then they announced the cast and it was like, oh, it's going to be Mark Hamill and Lena Headley <laughs> and you're like, oh, like, we didn't have a chance. Like, so. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, maybe I'd say Ghostbusters, Star Wars and maybe being like a ring announcer for for professional wrestling. I don't know. Oh, like, yeah. Justin Roberts, he's a great guy, but... Uh, not good enough. I don't know. With, with some push-ups from Big Sco, I think these lateral muscles could, could take him on, maybe. So, we'll see. <laughs> That's awesome. The, um, so, is it, like, because obviously you work for Universal Parks. I don't know how linked they are with Universal, like, the the company, the, the studio and stuff. Like, could you ever get work through that, or...? Um, I have done some random things through that. So, like, uh, there was a, a Walking Dead attraction that I filmed... An actual on-screen thing for that I uh, it's unfortunately closing uh, really soon at the park. It's been around for a couple of years. It was a, a maze, and it's an active movie studio. So you're we're we're really on the lot, and it's funny. Like I'll go to get lunch all the time and see Mindy from the Office or the Mindy Project. You know what I mean? Walking by and Ted Danson and the Good Place film over here and Dude. Cloud Nine or not Cloud Nine or the Superstore show. Uh, films on the back lot and a really cool movie to see is uh if you've seen that the new jim carrey movie that was like documenting how he made the man on the oh jim and andy yes jim and andy i saw that movie and almost all of the backstage stuff is literally where i break every day like that has changed obviously in the 15 years and that is like where some of the theme park performers break we have like a little our break space is literally in those alleyways between the studios so i'm always there and it's really cool and you know I, i'm no uh, when the tram drives by i always <laughs> tip my hat and wave and be like who is it who is it is it opie from <laughs> sense of anarchy is it opie i'm like yes it is it's me <laughs> it's me josh petersdorf voice of roadhog <laughs> well, one of the things i gotta i gotta say because since you brought up like the you know the walking dead thing so as uh, someone who's has known josh now for a couple of years now um i i'm used to hearing his voice all the time so you know when, it, when he does characters he does he does another character also i don't think we have to mention that is uh from a show on netflix uh called agretico yes. he does a, a character known as director tone which director ironically tone. It's, it's a it's a pig character ironically right it's a pig yeah, ironically it's a pig. Mm -hmm. angry Grammy pig love. character Mimi loved um, pigs. My grandma loved pigs. And she, when she passed away, all I did was pig rolls. So thank you, Grammy. You're doing, doing something good up there. <laughs> but, you know, I get used to hearing his voice. And this is just to show you that, you know, he's really passionate about his, about his work. Um, when we went to Universal, uh, this is not with you, Dan. This is, this is when I went during uh, back in May. Um, my friend was telling me, like, oh, you know, you should go through the Walking Dead thing. Okay. And he's like, don't look at the screen, though, when they do the infomercial. Just, just listen to everything. I'm like, oh, okay. And he's like, "Do you recognize that voice?" I'm like, "I don't really recognize the one." And I was like, "It's like, look, oh my god, it, it's Josh! I didn't recognize it." So I remember I went and told him that. I'm like, "Dude, I didn't actually recognize you when you did that." And he he got so excited. He's like, "Oh yes, oh, good." Made him so happy. He was such a little you. kid about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, that's 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 a great flattering moment because. I unfortunately have a voice when I don't book a lot of like Saturdays at seven on Nickelodeon or Starburst are great. Like I, do, I don't do a lot of that stuff. Most of my stuff is demons, evil people, bad men. <laughs> Very dangerous. dangerous. It's also like bad. a trailer, uh, like a trailer voice as well. Right? Yeah. Like there's a guy named Red Pepper. And the way the guy talks is he just basically every time he talks, he's like this. So he's the guy who's every time you see a movie, it's never... There's never a happy movie that comes out in October. It's always like, this October, knives are sharpened. <laughs> Close the door. Lock the keys. Us. Read it or. Like, you know. <laughs> Jesus. So, 
I think what I'm taking classes in is how to make my voice sound more approachable and how to be less gruff because I've clearly mastered the threatening angles in the, you know, and they're like, it's not very threatening, Josh, but this role is a father and he has a nice family. <laughs> we want him, <laughs> and we want him to, you know, even when I talk to my daughter, because she's so, she's a little one. Um, I used to be like, hello, hello, boo, 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 and she'd look at me like, you know, so then now recently I've been like, hey, daddy's, how are you? <laughs> like, I must sound ridiculous. Like, this poor thing is scared to death of my poor little voice. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's always, any voice actor will tell you, it's always the hunt to sound different. And your true power is your voice, but being able to throw it in so many different ways so that no one would know it was you is awesome. So That's pretty cool. I can... Yeah. <laughs> I could literally just sit here and talk about wrestling for like the next couple of hours, but I don't want to. We can talk about wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can't. We can't because it's such a specific thing. And uh, maybe one day we'll do a wrestling podcast. Jay was telling me Absolutely. that he might interview some some wrestlers soon. And I was like, dude, I'm coming in. <laughs> I don't even care. Yes. <laughs> we'll get you in on that for sure, dude. You know what's funny is uh, speaking to this kid is Adam Cole, who's the NXT champion. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Adam Cole's a huge fan. And he's a huge video game guy. And keep your eyes peeled because I know he tweeted something or Instagram something a, a week or two ago or a couple weeks back. He's going to start streaming soon. Oh yeah. Um. So I know he he plays a lot of games. I think he may, he played Overwatch. He may even play WoW. I'm not sure on that, but how cool, right? How does that you make know? you feel like seeing a wrestler play like a game? With Blown you away. <laughs> I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, I'm such a man, and like. That's brilliant. Like we were texting and it was so cool because like I was trying to help him out with kind of uh, how to get his feet wet, so to speak, in the industry. And the guy's so talented. I was like, we just got to point you in the right direction. And, yeah. And he's very busy. I know those those guys have such a rigorous schedule, but, you know, it's just it's just amazing. You know, it's 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 truly a testament to how powerful the craft can be, that everyone can appreciate it and that everyone gets a kick out of it. And that's what it's all about, man, is making people happy and and bringing smiles to the masses. And I know that sounds cheesy, but it's true. And, you know, it's it's true. Like, I think video games are the ultimate media. The difference between video games and maybe an animated series is in an animated series, you can watch it 10 times. It's your favorite thing. And, but everything's going to be the same every time you watch it. Overwatch and other adventures and Warcraft, you're having your own adventures, your own memories with these characters. You know, maybe you were at a point in your life when you were a little sad and you were a little bit down or depressed. And one night the guild really downed an important boss and that meant a lot to you. And that is what you remember. You know, I think a lot of us remember more of our guild mates and our friends online uh, and our and the moments we shared with them than we do the actual moments of the quest, you know. And I think that's the true power of this media is that we're having adventures with you all day. And so when you come up to me, you know, they, they tell me funny stories about when they've done things and hooked people off cliffs as Roadhog and they've laughed and sang voice lines to people and meeting other, yeah. you know, people who were really into that. And Roadhog also has spurned this huge, like, body positivity thing and cosplayers and gender bending. I think that's so cool, you know. You have people from all over uh, cosplaying as him. You have, like, amazing people like Shaku Cosplay who do these really intimate super intricate exact builds and then the same thing you have like jessica super intricate builds too and throwing in her own spice to it and i think it's so awesome that everyone can you know what i mean can pick apart the characters from overwatch and, and do it like that yeah i mean it's so it's so popular especially with cosplayers like it's it's a massive game i was talking about it today i've i have it but i haven't played it a lot but I I get it right. So every, like, I go to BlizzCon every year, and they do those like little animation things every year. Like they're they're it's really right? really cool. Like so yeah. so amazing. Like the backstories, right? Or yeah, yeah, the little That's origin stories yeah. and stuff. Yeah, and, like the trailer for Overwatch Two was like really really cool as well. Like, was... and that was an interesting thing, right? Like I don't know any game. I haven't told anything about that. Even if I was, I unfortunately wouldn't be able to tell you. <laughs> but as strictly from a fan, from like a fan's standpoint. Uh, I, I felt like it was weird how it kind of got leaked a little bit earlier in the week. Yeah. And then if you were at BlizzCon this year, it felt like it, they had to kind of like last minute throw something out there. Like maybe they weren't, that was supposed to be a super big Easter egg. You know what I mean? And yeah. that, cause Jay, you were there. You remember all they have yeah. 
Watch 2 was was that trailer, and they had a couple walls of like some concept art, and that was it. You know what I mean? So they always leave you like thirsting for more and trying to figure out what was going on, which could have been a marketing tactic, or it could have just been like, oh man, we kind of the 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 beans got spilled a little bit early. Now we got to kind of throw something else out there to make sure people are get a little something, you know, so they're not left completely empty handed. So yeah, I'm really excited to see what happens in the future. Yeah. I think we could agree that leaks suck though. Yeah. Like leaks, <laughs> <laughs> leaks, like as much as like they're really hype, you know, like, Oh dude, Overwatch 2, that's really cool. But then like you think of it from like a developer's point of view or like Jeff or anyone like that, like they've been yeah. trying to keep the secret and they've been working on it for so yeah. long. And then suddenly it was, like, it was it had to be heartbreaking for those people who've worked you know what i mean and on multiple levels heartbreaking because everyone's hard work went into that got got leaked and spoiled a little bit earlier heartbreaking on how it happened it was just an oversight of an email blah 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 and then the third part was maybe they weren't ready to show the whole hand and now they're forced to show what they got and it ends up looking like we don't have a lot because we weren't yeah. ready to show you our five fingers we only wanted to show you one yeah you know so I, I can only imagine how that felt. And it's such a family atmosphere with most of the employees at Blizzard that I feel that they let, if you go to the, the headquarters and we've, I've been a bunch of times, there's, you know, polish is like written in part of their mission statement, like release the game when it's ready. Uh, unfortunately, the reaction to like the Diablo mobile game happened last year. And I was really excited because I had done the last boss in that, uh, for the the demo or whatever it was me i'd done the voiceover for it and then everyone just hmm. just shit on it because it's just you know whatever the the, the community on one point ha some people wanted something else and so that's okay you know what i mean it's okay to want that but it turned into this huge meme online so mm -hmm. to speak and i felt bad about that too because the, you can't predict these things are going to happen you know what i mean and the community is passionate and if people didn't care they wouldn't they wouldn't raise such hell about it. So there's a there's a silver lining to everything, and uh, I think that you know the company is learning that in this ever changing dynamic of online games and and fan service and fan expectations that it's going to. I mean, Star Wars is a great example. No one was. Everyone has their opinion on Star Wars, whether you loved it or hated it. Everyone has an opinion, and it's kind of similar. You know what I mean? With 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 blizzard stuff right so last year i was terrible and so but, <laughs> but but it's okay and it's i think the line needs to be drawn when there's there's positive interaction and discourse and toxic and it's never okay to be toxic about anything and be overtly negative or hostile you know it's okay to say i don't like this it's okay to say this wasn't for me but it's not okay to like personally attack people and per you know what i mean that's never okay and to be overtly hostile is like is not okay and if it's, it's i'm also a firm believer of like if you're so passionate about that get your ass involved and make a change get in the industry rub shoulders with us and share your ideas so that maybe one day we can see your master plan you know what I mean? So true. <laughs> and uh, well said. for the well record, said. I guess I uh, and I've said this multiple times, and it's so funny. What whatever the chat reacts to it every time. But I actually played Diablo Immortal, and it, it actually wasn't that bad. <laughs> it's it, right. I think it just uh, this is just my opinion, and my opinion is like everyone else's opinion. I agree. Everyone wanted Diablo Four that year, and when yeah. they didn't get it, they're like, "I don't care what you get." we're gonna spit it out it's like a, it's like a baby who's like i don't like green beans or i love applesauce so if you give me anything other than applesauce i'm not going to going to eat it i'm not com comparing you know the fan base to babies at all i'm just using <laughs> it an app of you know what i mean when you want something and you don't get it you're not going to want the alternative because you wanted this you know if you go to an ice cream shop and you want chocolate ice cream and they give you vanilla ice cream you're going to be like i wanted chocolate ice cream and they're like well the chocolate ice cream is getting made right now it's not gonna be ready for a while and you're like well I, but i'm here now you know so i, I get it i get people who didn't want it but then this year they're like hey diablo 4 it's coming you know what I mean? So it's coming. And I, I think that the hatred and rage of Immortal has slowly tapered off over the year. And by, uh, by the, I think it's, I read an article, it's going into alpha testing soon or? Uh, yeah, in June, it's going into in beta. In June, right? right? Yeah. It's going into beta. So, you know, and it, it's its own thing. It's separate. It's, I, I personally, me, I don't play a lot of mobile games uh, because my eyes and even the, the screen is big. I just prefer to bring a Switch or to bring a Game Boy or something. You know what I mean? But I know plenty of people who do enjoy it, and there's money to be made. My son and his friends have got me to get 
clash royales that's i'm always every clash. four hours i'm like let me open my chest and <laughs> you know what i mean i don't i'm playing it for him so like he's like dad you gotta level up or they're gonna get out of the guild so <laughs> i think it's too much it's like a stigma though with mobile games isn't it with like microtransactions and all sorts of like uh, all sorts of weird practices it's a stuff. different it's a completely different well, it's a completely different form of media than any of us were used to growing one of the things i remember seeing about that since we're talking about that it was um I, and i'll stand i stand by what i say on this one i think one of the biggest things that problem was it was just the way that it was executed i think that if they pulled like a like a bethesda kind of moment like you know how bethesda for for elder scrolls the new elder scrolls they just show you this little scenery they could have just probably post something here you go we're, we're working on diablo 4 but to hold you guys off until we have more to show you check this out I th- don't. I don't think there'd be much of a backlash as much as it was on that. But what was funny was I remember you know, seeing a lot of people go online. And they're talking about it. And I'm not a mobile game person. I, I I don't play anything on my mobile phone at all like that. Most I'll probably ever play is probably maybe Tinder. Hearthstone or something oh. or Tinder. <laughs> Swipe right um, for the bard. Let me see sweet, lovely things to you. Anyways. <clears throat> But I remember seeing like some of the same people who were complaining, like, "Oh, did, did you know that you know this company is taking this one? They have percentage net. Uh, was it uh, the the company Net Netease? Netease, right? Net. Oh my God, Netease! Oh blah blah blah! I can't believe Netease is doing this. And then there's another company that came out and said, "Hey, we're working on a Marvel. Um, I'm sorry, Marvel game that's coming out. Um, by the way." We were completely funded by NetEase. Oh my gosh, golly gee willikers, guys! I can't wait to see what this Marvel game they're working on is. But you were complaining that the other stuff from that tease, but then. Okay, whatever. I'll walk away from that. I just think I just think it's a matter of like the way execution. I think that's all it really was for that. Yeah, a lot I of agree. people riling each other up as well. Like the, 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 pe- the people memeing it and everything like they, they would never try the game and they also infect uh, other people infect. and like them. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to call it call it infect. Because that's <laughs> what it is. Like, like, the, uh, like other people may have tried the game, but then like all the memes on the net and everything, like, no, nah, nah, I'm not going to try it. And I know I felt victim for it as well. I've been infected too. Um, but w- once you actually try like a mobile game, it's, it's, it's not that bad, really. Uh, I haven't tried Diablo, really, but... Depends on the um, game. Yeah, yeah, it really depends on the game, like microtransactions and all that stuff, uh, like you mentioned. But uh, yeah, I feel like there's just like a big... Yeah. It's a stigma. You know, it's a stigma. Yeah, it's a stigma. Yeah, that's what it is. That's I just stigma. got... A new idea right now for a mobile game, right? Mm-hmm. It's a mobile game where you have to like tap the screen and you have to try to beat Sko in doing push-ups. <laughs> How do you do the tap tapping the screen? You just, just got to tap as fast as you can. You you don't really win. You just kind of do a little bit better each time. <laughs> okay. I think the new the new ter- the new microtransactions started off as something completely different than what they wound up as. You know, microtransactions used to be. DLC. There were DLC. It was like three yeah. or four of them per release. And now they've become like an integral part of the game. And I think the true art of it is going to be, you know, working it in. I think the cosmetic rewards are, are better just than uh, play to win rewards, obviously, or pay to win, because th- then it feels like, look, if you wanted to spend X amount of money, then you have the special skin, you know? And I also think that they've, done great things with microtransactions like the mercy skin in overwatch that was you know benefiting breast cancer and so on and so forth it can be done correctly and it can be done incorrectly and i think that as we move into new generations of gaming the opportunities to make money are just too big for them but the industry is facing a lot of criticism and backlash from you know gambling and mechanics in terms of like loot boxes and stuff like that when it's like look is this legitimate you know what i mean and is this going to be tolerated for their honor is it going to be regulated and i think the minute the government wants to regulate stuff is everyone like all right you know know what i mean we're just moving along we'll wipe our hands clean and figure out another way so just my two cents (laughs) i mean i guess the problem is that that it actually works like people actually buy the microtransactions like little like kids using their mm-hmm. dad's phone or whatever and just buy a ton mm-hmm. of coins and <laughs> gems or whatever and clash royale and stuff like, it, it works so it's kind of how i compare like a lot of these uh younger videos those millions of hits i mean 
terms of been in a restaurant or been in a supermarket and seen some kid with his iPad watching a Let's Play a Minecraft. You know what I mean? Like they're all over the place. My own son was watching those at one point in, or unwrapping videos. And I think that, you know what I mean? Like that's just a testament of our times. You know what I mean? It's, it's up to you as an individual to dictate what your child is going to do and show them other avenues so that, you know, because me personally, like if my kid was watching a lot of Let's Play Minecraft videos, I'd be like, why are you watching that? Just, just play the game. You know what I mean? I'd be like, here's the game. Play the game. You know what I mean? Or take the iPad out of his hand and do that. But again, it's personal choice. If people take, you know, pleasure in it, who are we to say that they can't enjoy it? You know, I know personally, I don't spend any money really on microtransactions or mobile games, but that doesn't mean I think that there should be a market for it. It's just not for me, you know? It's just, I think times are changing. And uh, it's, I think... I don't know, like, it's more accepted for kids, I guess. Like, kid, like younger gamers kind of just don't really think about it. And, uh, but for me, like, growing up with, like, Crash Bandicoot, Metal Gear Solid, like, PS1 games and stuff like, like, yeah. N64S. Like, yeah. that was just, it was just a foreign concept, I guess, at this point, to, uh, to have all of that. But there's, like, I don't know, I see so much enrage online, like, all the time, and I'm just like, <sighs> like, the whole, like, the whole, like, refunded thing with Warcraft 3 um like i understand like why people did it but i feel like on top of people who actually genuinely were not happy with it i think there's also a big group of people who literally refunded it because their favorite content creator refunded it yeah, yeah. no you're 100 percent right like they didn't even they just bought it and they were like oh dude like you know xyz may he he said that i gotta refund it so i gotta do that because you know that's what that's what he he thinks about it but like I've I've played it. I played like custom games and stuff. Seemed okay. Like I'm not like massive into Warcraft three, but like I, I enjoyed it for what oh. was what it was worth. But I understand the outrage. I know there is obviously some back end yeah. issues that people have with it. But it's for mainly me, the personally, it's though, isn't it? okay. Was that? It's mainly the cutscenes, though, isn't it? There was a lot it of was, there was a lot was of stuff. Was it more? Yeah, I played the, I played the custom games. No real issues. Uh, well, yeah, some bugs, I guess, from like porting maps over and stuff, I suppose. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, I, I enjoyed playing it. I wouldn't really. I wouldn't refund it. I think I have, just, I have to believe a that, yeah. more. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I was going to say, it's, it's mostly the, some of the people were really excited to kind of see like the the retcons that were made because there's a lot of yeah. retcon changes after uh, the original Warcraft 3 and then people were like, oh, we don't want that. We want the original story. Uh, I think that's what a lot of people were upset was just because it's because it's it was promised content that was cut. Like everyone's going to be pissed off about that. Yeah. yeah. People want it. People want Warcraft 4. So Part of me has to believe, again, this is all speculative. I have no, and as an employee of Blizzard, my opinions are strictly my own. I do not represent those in views of the company. But <laughs> I have to believe, as a fan, at one point when they were doing this, they were like, you know what? We're putting a lot of effort into reskinning this game and making it. Why don't we just make you, you know what I mean? There had to have been that conversation. Yeah. Of we're putting a lot of work into this. At what point do we say, okay, we're done? You know what I mean? And we'll patch in some other stuff as it goes. Let's focus on a new Warcraft, maybe, or a new RTS, period. You know what I mean? I I if we're talking about it, someone at Blizzard has to have had that idea also. And and I maybe that's why it released the way it did. And a lot of people weren't happy with with it, because like Jay said, they wanted more. They wanted more cutscenes. They wanted more clarity on storyline. They wanted to see it. And there comes a point when you just gotta cut, you, you you just gotta trim the fat and and ship it. You know what I mean? And we're talking about a game that's almost twenty years old, too. You you know what I mean? And to to re and that's happening this year also. Like Final Fantasy VII remake is another thing that I'm excited to see it but I'm also really skeptical so I'm like it's we've been it's not the whole game we've been told that after Midgar it pretty much ends you know what I mean so it, it's it's like are we do you want to devote resources to remaking old stories or, or do we want to tell new stories you know I think that that's that's just a question that has to be asked internally yeah especially if there was uh you got to think of it this way if there was a Warcraft 3 team that made Warcraft 3 reforged what are they doing now <laughs> exactly. Ooh, yeah. Exactly. Are they still working on content for PTR because or patches, etc. in the future, or have they moved on to you know? Um that's kind of how Overwatch was created was that it was the it was 
Titan and then Titan right. yeah. morphed into something else and then it became Overwatch. Overwatch. And if I'm a betting man, I'm betting that what we saw of Overwatch 2 is nothing like what we will get when it comes out. You know what I mean? It just it just wouldn't make uh it wouldn't it wouldn't make sense if like uh, that's all we saw. You know what I mean? So I think that there's more to yeah. the pie that hasn't been revealed yet and uh I think that's true with a lot of games and Blizzard especially has some very beloved franchises in StarCraft, Warcraft and now Overwatch that they you know what I mean they have they have a lot to work with so it'll be curious to see what happens. Now um don't we don't want to hold you too much long cuz I know you have some stuff to do today. Um but you've been also you you stream quite a bit on Twitch yourself um you just beat Xenogears, if I recall. So, did well, you actually finish beating it? <laughs> so here's the deal. I'm on the last... I'm on disc two. I'm on literally the part before the end dungeon. And Xenogears is a game that's taken me 22 years to beat. So I highly recommend it. The game is insane. It suffered from a controversy back then that I didn't know of because all of disc two is like... It's basically like a seven-hour ending in the sense that the end of the game is like... It's totally different. They just literally start skipping stuff and like narrating you and telling you what happened too much at the time for them to do. The storyline is insane, but that, I'm 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 getting close to beating it. Oh. Do you want to play, you want to beat it too? <laughs> <laughs> and on my Eddie. stream, Eddie, yes, this dog has his own emote. So you know what I mean. You can you can get Eddie's stream also. So he's a Brussels Griffin and he's a good boy. He's the best. Boy. You also, if you guys also want to check it out, if we can. See if we can get a link okay. maybe for his yeah post his stream chat, maybe. Um, he also does stream Overwatch. I know, I shock. <laughs> I stream everything. I stream. I like playing Apex. I like playing PUBG. I oh, play Fortnite. Day. Um, uh, I like. Post chat. Don't play Fortnite anymore, but uh, same. But I play a little bit of everything, and we're going to be after we Nintendo Gears we're Final Fantasy Tactics. We're going to go beat that one and clean out some of the old backlog. Uh, I streamed our WoW raids too. We used to stream a lot of WoW, and then I fell behind in my gear, so I wasn't invited to the raids anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but with Shadowlands coming out, I will be playing again. Um, I'm gonna go priest still. Can neither con I can neither confirm nor deny any involvement in the future of it. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. So it'll be a fun new expansion. I'm curious to see how the squish is going to happen, too. Everyone's getting squished to, like, what, 50 are we getting squished to? 50 to 60. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh my god. That is huge. You know what I mean? That's a big deal. Mm -hmm. it, it's going to... I think it didn't, wasn't, wasn't one of the core philosophies. They said they want it to really mean something when you level up. Like, it feels like... Uh, yeah. Yeah. That was one of the big things didn't. they wanted to do. That makes sense. I'm going to be... It's going to be interesting to see... You know how how, it, how the world looks then you know and i think it'll be cool that you can pick whatever expansion you want and level through that you know i think that'll be really cool like i love leveling through wrath that was one of my favorite places mm -hmm. uh level through and just one of my favorite zones was the grizzly hills uh, with all the water slides and all the fun i love that area the music was grizzly hills the well. music oh, was great. great oh yes we love think, you grizzly hills if i could just say i, th I think for me one of the most iconic like like music, uh, music played ever played in World of Warcraft for me is still Old Wars. Like music as you're entering with the fanfare, I just ah god, it's just so beautiful. The dun 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 dun, dun, dun. I, I just absolutely love it. It just blows me back. Like when I first went into there, I hope that I want to see. I love the Warcraft movie, and I want to see if there's a sequel. I really want them to go into like the Lich King and stuff like that. And I really, yeah. think or even like a Netflix really... series because there was that that yeah. rumor, well the the leak or rumor or about whatever about the Diablo anime series, is it? And then an Overwatch? Was it an Overwatch series or something? Was there? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you heard about that. Don't know. I did hear about that, but I only heard about that from the internet. About that from, from Blizzard. And if I had, I wouldn't be able to say I did anyway. But uh, I, uh, I would love that. I think that's... That would, that would be amazing. You know what I mean? Wouldn't it just... Be an thing right what so a great what a great payday for you <laughs> <laughs> not even that but of course that but of course i think it's more that we get to flesh out these characters we get to see more of characters that we that we don't know about like the roadhog and junk rats like the zarya and Widowmakers, you know like the reapers and so on and so forth so it'll do wonders in the, the game 
a Warcraft show would be incredible too. You know, like there's so much open content to to dig from that. Uh, you know, I bet I bet it's it, it's probably being talked about. If The Witcher is any indication of success rate. They probably are looking at that like, well, you know, we could do something too, you know. So oh, it wouldn't have to be as, because Warcraft is a, it's more PG thirteen than The Witcher, who is just very mature. So I think you could there'd be a broader audience to to dip into, you know, and it would be yeah. it would be interesting to see. I'd love to see that. How would you, how would you do it? Would you anime it or would you live action? You think you're allowed? I would live action it. I yeah. would live action the Warcraft series, um, but I think with an Overwatch one, it would be animated. You know what I mean? Imagine a live action Overwatch. Like yeah, who's the? Strange, you know yeah. what I mean? It'd be really creepy. Like <laughs> <laughs> it'd be really creepy to have like a uh, uh, Winston and like Roadhog talking to like human beings would be like really weird. Like <laughs> it'd be like Ninja Turtles in the nineties. Like really, yeah. just, oh, just weird. Like they the did that a lot in like, the nineties. Like, yeah. Animated shows, real life, and it just really was messed up. I mean, you look at like I guess the Sonic movie. <laughs> That's a little yeah. Bit <laughs> Which w- ironically it was actually better than it deserves to be. It was really quite good. I actually really enjoyed it. <laughs> it was a great film. We grew up with movies like Super Mario Bros. Was like our film transition. That's a cult like classic. John Leguizamo. Yes, that, and, but, uh, that movie had nothing to do with Mario though. <laughs> It's just trust, own, like, wait, you mean trust the fungus? It was so weird, right? Like, what acid trip were they on when they just when they when they were like, let's write this film about about two plumbers in New York who? You know what video game movie wasn't bad? Like, it was another one. It was Double Dragon was actually pretty decent, I think. Double Dragon was. was. I remember that one, and I remember Spawn was good. Spawn was decent for like a comic book. Uh, again, but other, what other awesome. video game movies were there that they released? Street that... Fighter. What's the best video game movie ever? Remember, we say? had Street Fighter with Jean Claude Van Damme and Ra- and, and, <laughs> and Raul, dude. Oh, Raul Julia God. as <laughs> Raul <laughs> Julia as M Bison. The best yeah. video game movie. <sighs> Super Mario Bros. Super Show intro. What is this? Yeah. So, so th- that's oh, what no, I, don't, I, I, I don't, don't, yeah, I, don't do it. Don't do it. I haven't seen the movie, but the Super Mario <laughs> Super Show. Oh man, I, I will never get that intro out of my head. Or oh, we're the Mario uh, Brothers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <We're here to laughs> that that show was awesome because it had the Zelda cartoon. Yeah. Okay, princess. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it was a cartoon though. I mean, it had a cartoon. There we go. <laughs> 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 What is wrong with you? <laughs> what is this? I love it so much. It's it's the only thing I uh, think about when you talk about like movies, um, uh, video game movies, or, like uh, TV shows. I think I had it on like VHS or something, like recorded in. Uh, no, no. Some, Dude, Warcraft know. is honestly up there for it. May be when I can't. I'm thinking of like that as top video game to like true cinematic movie experiences. They because they were so true to the source material. You know, it was really in like the visuals of it, it looked like it should even like when like the Stormwind uh, flyover shots and Karazhan was like, yo, this is what it really looks like. You yeah. know, it was already established what this looks like. Duncan Jones was a smart man and was like, I'm not going to give you subverted expectations. I'm going to give you real expectations of something that was already there. So imagine how that movie would be if it wasn't like Hollywood all over it. It would, be, it would right? be so good because they got so many things right, but then they had like this, you know, like this. Dude, I, mar- I marked out with the uh, stuff. With the Murloc bit when he crosses the bridge and it makes the Murloc noise. He was like, "What about the summoning stone in the background when you see it passing oh, through?" Man. There's like little bits like that. I love that. I would love yeah. to. Yeah, like a... dude, I'm actually there. It is. I'm gonna make a video breakdown of the Warcraft movie. I love it. There it is. I love it. I'm gonna do it. Make sure in the time time when cinema needed a hero. <laughs> Crash Cinema was reborn. <laughs> do it, do it, and I'll do. I'll do your. I'll do your uh, intros and goes alert sounds too. You know? <laughs> to Scott, yeah, you still owe Scott forever. Two years it's been. You didn't do his alerts. Wow. So now he put. He's saying, "Wish so two years." Yeah. Was, Tell that freaky <laughs> owes me for two years. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, someone I, I know does a really good Scott impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> needs to be more Scott. Okay. Yeah, I'm more so, Scott. Yeah. I, I gotta say this, I, 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 Sko. I'm sorry if I, you know, have to say this. It's just one of the funniest things I remember from this past BlizzCon. 
Because I, I don't really know Sko on a personal level. So whenever I like see Sko, it's like you see this, you know, big buff guy, like very like serious, you know, competitive gamer, right? Uh, and I, when I introduced him to uh, Patty Madsen at the, remember Dan, it was over at the uh, the Blizzard. mixer, the Blizzard yeah, the mixer. Blizzard party. Yeah, just, was... just seeing him go like, you know, is, wait, are you really Sylvanas? Are you really Sylvanas? Can, can you do the voice? And just see him get excited. That was just like, <laughs> but it, it's it, that's like oh. the magic of voice acting, right? When you see a character that you brought to, like you know, that, that you love, you know, you hear the, the person that brings that character to life. I think that's what makes it extra special. The, yeah, the, yeah, it's a, such a rewarding experience to see I mean, somebody's face light up, man. That's what it's all about. I mean, that was a roadhog, man. Mind. Just. Uh... Yeah, because Vaughn was like Starstruck here. He was freaking out before. one more time. Can you please do the laugh? Can you please? See how red I get when I do that shit? It's funny, though. I, because, you know, being able to go travel to, like, conventions, I don't really, like, get, like, starstruck when it comes to, like, I guess, like, a lot of things like that. I will get starstruck, though, if I meet a certain game developer. Like, when I met uh, Mike Morheim, I, I legit cried in front, in front of him. It was, like, I was so pathetic. Because <laughs> I, I know it was the year he, you know, that he left. It was his final year there. Yeah, yeah. You met him backstage, uh, and you he knew who you were. No, it wasn't even backstage. We, um, I think... I think Josh, you were you were just arriving. I think I was you messaged me that you just arrived and you were meeting with with, uh, with our friends down below. And I was passing by uh, Dark Moon Fair, and I see him just like there with the security guards, and I'm just like, oh, this is my chance to get like my little like my my lyric book signed. Was he and wearing then, the Illidan collared shirt? The no, he was wearing the, the he was wearing the Starcraft. <laughs> he was wearing the Starcraft. <laughs> He's wearing the StarCraft shirt that he has. Um, and then I, I, met, I see him, and he looks at me, and I just hear him say, oh, hey, Jay. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> like that. And uh, he's like, you know, I go over there and everything, and I'm like, I started stuttering. I'm like, I, because, you know, they just had the announcement that he's, you know, passing the torch over to Jalen and Brack. And I didn't get to meet him my first BlizzCon, so this is my second BlizzCon when I get to see him. And I was just like, I didn't think I would get to say, you know, thank you because, you know, your games, uh, these games that you guys have created, you know, opened up so many doors for me. I, I don't hide it. You know, I, I have, uh, I suffered from a lot, like a lot of, you know, depression through high school and these games actually helped me become better at socializing uh, and, you know, making friends outside of the game as well. Um, so as I'm telling him, he's like, he looks at me, he's like, you know, man, that's great to hear. And he says to me, can I get a picture with you? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And after that, um, you know, People were taking pictures because, you know, I was fucking crying. Oh, sorry. I was crying. <gasps> this is a family show, Jay. Uh, I know. Oh, sorry. No. My apologies. Um, What's the matter with but, you? My mother's watching. But uh, I remember, like, I just, like, said after like that, I was done everything. I was like, I was, like can, can I get a hug? He's like, of course you can. But, like, that's, like, the moment I probably geeked out. And then, of course, meeting Chris Metzen right after that, and I geeked out even more. <laughs> I I think, like, thinking about, like, fanboying stuff, I, I think the one person who I probably couldn't, if I met, I wouldn't get a word out, is probably Dwayne Johnson. I think I would, like, freak out. Uh, well, let's be, let's be honest. He'd be like, what, you want to say something? And you're about to say, it doesn't matter what you're going to say! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think he's he'll be the one that I would be. Because he's just like, you just look at him like he's a giant man. He's just, like, ridiculously great human being. I just don't That's know. how I feel when I'm backstage with like Darren and Matt. I'm like, hey guys, hey. <laughs> we're all friends, but I'm still like, hold it in. Matt always worthy. tells me to stop touching his hair. He's like, Josh, can you stop touching my hair? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just I'm like, let me smell it. <laughs> no, <I'm just> like... <laughs> <laughs> it smells like lilacs and roses on the I'm sure it does. Stuff. <laughs> just so you know, Matt Mercer's hair smells like. <laughs> no. <laughs> this look at look at look at where this has devolved into. So, stories of your of Josh smelling Matt's hair. So, so. <laughs> is that a real thing? Is that, is that a real thing that happened? <laughs> Matt's a great dude. Uh, I, uh, the, the, I met him right after we recorded overwatch we did this uh i was in a uh, ad for the san diego zoo and he was one of the people in the group session playing like a lion and i came in i never knew like i was like oh you're you're in overwatch i was like yeah and he's like oh cool like i am too and i was like sweet and then like i think literally the director's like okay everybody so we had to like you know start actually working and so uh at the end i i remembered i was like oh what did you do in overwatch Are you, were you like 
I may have even said something stupid, like, were you in like marketing or did you? And he's like, no, <laughs> I'm, I'm McCree. And I was like, oh, snap, what's up, dog? <laughs> I, I feel uh, like you just said about some advert for the San Diego Zoo with you and Matt Mercer. What is this it advert? It exists. Wait, wait, it was wait. <laughs> Sorry, Josh, I gotta ask. If he was lying, please tell me you had a voice of pig in this for this commercial. <laughs> I, uh, I think I was a... Uh, I don't know if I was Santa in this. I may have been... <laughs> I may have been Santa. Um, yeah, I think I was Santa in that one. He was a lion. I was Santa Claus, and it was like a Christmassy ad for uh, for the San Diego Zoo, and someone's going to find that one day and play it, and it'll be me. Oh, 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 Merry Christmas to all the animals at the San Diego Zoo. Panda, I would do this, and then Panda would say some lion. <laughs> Santa rolls... Uh, evil men, demons, that's what I play. So <laughs> Santa. <laughs> Santa is a demon. So how, me. how would you like train yourself to be like, uh, I guess do nicer roles? Would you do like voice coaching or how, what would you do? Yeah. Taking classes. Uh, I'm going to do some theater this year. Hopefully I'm going to go try and back into live theater. And, uh, I got really inspired last year. My wife got me this awesome present and we got season tickets to the Pantages in LA and we saw, some amazing plays and performances. We saw Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, Wicked, Cats, and Phantom. Wow, what an amazing lineup those were. And it really blew my mind. Um, to Because I grew up on theater as a kid. Like when I was in sixth to ninth grade, I did a lot of theater. And then I switched over to kind of sports in high school. And I was really athletic and I was good at sports, but I was never happy doing it. I think it was because the sport I played was water polo. And I was a really good swimmer, but water polo and swimming is like two a day all all year round so you'd get up at 5 a.m and go jump in a pool for an hour and a half before school no one wants to do that like you know and i have a lot of respect for the people who do and water polo was a because uh, half of it is above water and the other half is underwater dirty game you know what i mean and i was kind of like a, a fair sport when i was a child so like getting kicked in the balls and like seeing a lot of this underground stuff I was unused to. I was like, why are they like blatantly cheating? And like, you, know, <laughs> you know, like I was having a hard time comprehending it, but theater always, I missed it. So I think this year, one of my goals uh, for myself is to do some, to try and get into the theater, whether it's a small part, an extra part or whatever, get back in there. And I'm going to take some more classes to try and uh, make my voice more relatable conversational just to expand my horizons you know i quit smoking cigarettes like six years ago and um that was a great life moment for me and it was right after i did i smoked one cigarette in the middle of the first roadhog session and i went back in the booth and i was like i don't know if i can do this voice and smoke cigarettes like <laughs> i don't know if they if they can exist so don't smoke kids uh i finally quit and it's been six years cold turkey haven't had one so wow, congrats yeah absolutely Impressive. appreciate that congrats. thank you guys so congrats. it's been uh you know it's been you replace one thing with another and i was lucky that i replaced some voice acting with smoking and so now i'm you know of course paranoid that was it the cigarettes all those years that gave me the leathery <laughs> tone and no of course not so it's just about finding your niche and the best advice i ever got about voice acting was the most powerful thing you have as a voice actor is your individuality it's your voice because your voice is like no one else's because that's yours so learn how to make your voice the best and then you can learn how to throw and vary through variations on your voice you know so don't ever try and do stuff and i tell people all the time if you have if you have like a an animation reel especially animation for characters don't make it full of other voices that you can mimic like from the simpsons you may be able to do an amazing may sound just like him you may be able to do an amazing tommy pickles but guess what you're not tommy pickles and you're not the guy who does homer simpson and that's not what casting people are looking for they want to see what makes you different you know what i mean and trust me if one day the opportunity for a voice match for one of those arises you will know me and another friend of mine get a lot of voice matches all the time for brad garrett um we get asked to do vin diesel we get asked to do uh, other low voiced gentlemen i get asked a lot to try and do will arnett um and i've done 
a few scratch tracks for Will Arnett. When a scratch track is basically when a production company comes and goes, hey, Will's not available until this time. We need to get the timing of the commercial right. Can you do this for us in the same kind of breath that Will would do it? So when he gets it, it's really easy for him. We can be like, hey, and he can just bang it out. Um, yeah, and that's what it is. You know what I mean? So there's always a place for, there's many things to do in voice acting. And I tell people this all the time. If you don't ever become a voice actor and you never book a role, you can still work in the industry. You could still be a, uh, work the board. You could still, you, you know what I mean? Write the script one day. You, you, you could, you know what I mean? Be the person who is the scratch guy. You could, there's a million opportunities in the industry if you want to chase it. And like everything, it takes hard work, dedication, and getting used to hearing no a lot. And, you know, so don't let hearing no bring you down. Wait for the yes. I love your attitude. Well said. It's, it's so good. Yeah, it's like, it's like the best advice ever for like anyone out there watching. Uh, Keep it moving. You know what I mean. You got to be. You got to be positive. It breeds negativity, and you know, on a personal level, like I really look up to. Uh, when our daughter was born, my wife had high blood pressure the last month of the pregnancy and was hospitalized for a month straight. And watching how strong she was like inspired me like oh my god i like there's no excuses for me and you know what i mean and our baby was born uh six weeks early and she's fine her name is sunny but she was premature so it's scary and she was in the nicu and the intensive care unit for a month uh, the first month of her life she was in there and when stuff like that happens you don't have a choice you know what i mean like i was panicking a lot and freaking out and my bastion in a beacon of strength and was like you know we just got to keep going there's nothing we can do just you know, go with the process, keep doing the right things in your life and the right opportunities will arise. And you know what? We made it through and here we are. You know what I mean? On the method, first ever tavern talk uh, on a Monday, cold chilling with, you know, my boys, Mr. GM, Martin and Jay. So, I mean, things are things are going to be fine. You know what I mean? It's going to be OK. And again, man, you know, thank you for taking the time to, to be here with us today. It, it means a lot. Absolutely. Thank you guys for having me. Like Jay said, I do have some stuff to, to get to today, so I apologize for having to, to dip out, but I hope to, to chat again. And I, uh, I'm i a big fan of all you guys and all positive members of the community. I wouldn't do this if you weren't. And I think all of you deserve that recognition. For you do something right. And like I said, you know, Method is a, uh, a class act and a leader in, in esports organizations in terms of you know, defining what it's going to be like and what it sh the professionalism that you guys show is is also. And everyone has a little tongue cheek jokes and with other or sports uh, organizations. We get it, you know, and that's fine. But I think that you know, I really look up to to organizations like Method and stuff who are really paving the way in, in everything from terms of sponsorship to production value. Your guys raced to world firsts were amazing, you know. And even if you didn't get it this okay because you guys are out there trying man and like i said you set the bar so it's kind of like in pro wrestling when you're the champ you know what i mean uh everyone's you coming you. everyone's <laughs> coming for you so that gives people more fuel to their fight you know limit uh had that last world first and i'm sure that that was probably some of the guys and gals were bummed out but you know what they had extra motivation because they wanted to beat you you know, it was more about like, it wasn't just race world first, it was beating method. So you're adding another layer, another angle, another aspect of depth. And I think that's really cool. And I respect you guys a lot for doing that. Thank you so much for the kind words, man. Absolutely, man. Really, really uh, impressed by you guys. So keep up the good work. And and I'm just going to stand like this every time Scott's around. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> and again... <laughs> Anyone who, if you ever have the opportunity to go to a convention to meet Josh, I, I highly recommend you do so. He's he's a definitely a genuine human being. Um, very good. I friend. do want to shout out. I will be at uh, the Overwatch Homestead for the San Francisco Shock, March twenty eighth to 29th. Shock twenty twenty dot com is your tickets for that. Um, and they may be sold out, but I'm really looking forward to to seeing you all at some conventions over the next couple of year, uh, months. Rather, I'm going to be at some Galaxy Cons, and I think we're doing Grand Rapids, and I'm doing Indianapolis. I'm um, doing going to be in the mid all over the place. I'm trying to get out to uh, one of the comic cons in Wales. We're talking about that. You know what I mean? So we're working on getting, getting over there overseas. So I look forward to meeting all you. Nice. I want to see that wrestling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Did so you, you saw the video when Skeletor burned the man alive and I broke my ribs in that video, right? So, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> legit. No, sh- no, like oh. straight shoot. Broke yeah. my ribs. No joke. I'll take a bump. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take a look at that. Absolutely, check it out. I it's will. Amazing. And thank well, you, Jay the Bard. Be... Jay's an amazing voice of positivity too, and I really appreciate you, Jay. Um, I, love I know that that you're always going to be doing the, the right thing, Jay. So look up to you too, buddy. So keep up the good work, bro. And if I can, if I can say to you um, before you go, um, for a lot of people that may not know this, or people who do follow me, this, I, I uh, do voice acting now for a very well-known parody series on YouTube called the Dead by Daylight parody series. I voice um, Ash Ash Williams from Evil Dead in the parody series, and these actually hit like a million views every month. And the person oh, who got right. me in a voice pushed me. Oh. The, problem, I say, the person who pushed me into this was Josh. Josh is the one that told me how what I needed to do to do this kind of stuff. I'll never forget that. You're That's the one awesome. that kept pushing me on the way. So, Hey, we're all in this together, big guy. We're all in this together, and uh, thank you guys for being so cool. Appreciate that. Thanks for having me on today, and thanks, everybody. Thank you guys for coming out, and appreciate you guys. Okay, have a wonderful rest of your day, and the Tavern Talk continues. <laughs> Autobots, care, transform and roll out! <laughs> Cheers, Josh. Thank you so much. Cheers, my uh, friends. Cheers. Should I leave the call first, or are you going to cut me out? Is that off? You can, oh. you can, you can press the button. You can. You can, you can okay, I haven't figured that stuff out yet. <laughs> Man, we Again. were going without any scuffed moments it's for gonna a while. Be really scuffed. <laughs> it's going to be scuffed, scuffed as f. And so, anyway, thank you guys again. Have a wonderful rest of the day. And we're all animals. Bye. Look how scuffed it is. It was fun, is. man. Oh no, that was great. Let's jump to this. It was scene. really good. I right, production. Please, uh, please. Production uh, of scuffed it. What have you done? Yeah. What have you done? Actually, let me. I'll tell you what. I'll jump back to the scene and we'll pretend. Uh oh. Pretend. Oh, it's my arm. moments. Yeah, scuffed Two moments on the tavern. You guys just keep talking while I'm uh, unscuffing it. Well, hey guys, a, a quick shout out to uh, the people in Method, the graphics, uh, the graphics guys. I'm gonna call yeah, them. It's been, uh, yeah, who's been fixing, um, setting all of this up pretty much last minute. Um, helped us out to get all of these scenes, all the graphics, all the uh, little teasers and promotions on uh, uh, on Twitter. Just like really, really cool. Freaking awesome. Over my expectations. Yeah, it's really awesome. Yeah. yeah. Nice production, Dan. Look, we dude. have ourselves a foundation. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm everywhere now. <laughs> Look at me, I'm Josh. Give me <laughs> your, your part, Josh. Part me. Part yeah. yourself. Oh, I am lucky. You. <laughs> yeah. I even have a guitar there on the side. You see, <laughs> yeah, that's you reach out to too. Yeah. Uh, right, we're nearly there. Don't worry, guys. Just keep talking about something. And uh, we'll make it unscuffed. I was thinking about putting in some like nice tavern music in the background, but I, don't I was know. thinking yeah. about that too. I I, I think that'll be uh, well, as, 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 as long as it's like chill for a very long. Well, no, time. The, the wow, like so, wow uh, actually have like an album of tavern music from all the. Uh... I saw you pull that off. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't, like, don't. It got up on screen. It was real, real fun. And some other stuff <laughs> as well. Yeah, I you, keep... you, you, you've been handling production really well as well. Just like showing the video of Jay, like See? that that was awesome. Like, I love that. This is why you're the one that's uh that's in charge of the OBS. <laughs> yeah, dude, I haven't run a podcast for years. This is all. Uh... Um, but you know, so while we have the chance, while you're setting this up, um. You know, we're so far. If you guys want to see, you know, maybe some other voice acting guests, you know, please like let us know who you'd like us to bring on here for the next uh, episode. Uh, you know, we want to try to bring more guests, you know, and not just voice actors, you know, we can bring other content creator friends, of course. Um, but if there's someone maybe from World of Warcraft or Overwatch you guys would like to see, please, you know, let them know, uh, you know, the method Twitter or, you know, tweet, tweet out to one of us so we can try to get something to happen for you guys. Yeah, we've had some interest already from some uh, method members who want to come on, especially for Boom. the, uh, for the Sylvanas. trivia. Uh, Sylvanas. All right. Laura I'm, Bailey. I'm fi- I fixed it. Matthew Mercer, oh, dude. Oh, Matthew, that would that'd be. Oh, Patty, awesome. Patty Matson. Yeah, that'll be the. Oh, way you know, go. nice. You know, I've been told that Sylvanas Windrunner is a. Uh, she loves her bards. She loves bards. She. Oh, no. You know, I'm just saying. That we might be able. Am I missing reference? She, yeah, she's been. She's been. She's been to. Um, she's been to my tavern a couple times. She's been a guest a few times. I'm sure we can bring her to. Uh, to this uh, method tavern. We'll work on that. We'll work on that. 
Are you gonna try to hit me with like, see how starstruck you can get Martin like every week? <laughs> oh, did you know that I have? You know I can? Did you know I, I can do a Sylvanas impression like that on? Can you really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was my, okay. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. I gotta. I gotta, I gotta get the stretch in. You know. Gotta get the stretch in. Yeah. yeah Make sure. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Loosey goosey. Because you know it's a it's a very very new thing. So I'm just gonna say like something like um. I'll be like, oh, you've earned the bard's favor, but not mine, right? Okay. <clears throat> Wait for ah, it. you've earned the bard's favor, but not mine. Oh, oh that, that was impressive. Jay, it was almost really like impressive. it was actually her. Yeah, that was that oh, was that was holy spot smokes. On. Yeah, couldn't tell the difference at all. That was yeah. See, it's real good. Whoa, I'm impressed. Told you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, I wish I had something yeah, prepared as well. Now, <laughs> like one of, in my soundboard. So hey, dude, you had the applause. You had the applause. Right? I was like, where the hell is that? Did, did Dan yeah. have that ready? <laughs> no, it was mine. With the I applause. even had this one. I, I I was hoping to catch like when uh when we got like an F word. I have. <laughs> so Just be ready loud. deep in you guys. Oh, was it loud? I'm sorry. That was like, I was like, what the? Ah! <laughs> I have no control of this soundboard. I keep trying, but yeah. No, but sorry, you sorry know, guys, I, I will, I, I will work on it. I will work on getting uh, Sylvanas Windrunner. That would be cool. I mean, I, I already got really starstruck today because I played Roadhog so much when I played Overwatch. Like, I remember when uh, the first when the first wave of like family and friends hit. I was sitting in a uh, in a gaming house in Germany. Uh, I was signed for uh, SK at the time, playing uh, playing Hearthstone. And as soon as uh, I hope they're not listening, as soon as the I got the family and um, friends key, I just like I, I just played Overwatch like all. I actually was looking through my emails for a, a Blizzard email, oh. and uh, I found an email that said like open beta for Overwatch. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's so old school. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Also, chat. Uh, I am playing some very quiet tavern music so do let me know if it is too loud or something like that. but it should be just a humble just to keep the mellow chilled vibes and uh warcraft music is copyright free if anyone at method was wondering yeah <laughs> so, oh is it really uh-huh yeah oh, you, can use it for anything. you can use it for oh. anything it's amazing yeah hmm. yeah i use it as background thing when i used what is my original like like specific wow stuff for podcasting oh it looks like motorellian okay I, I i got down a few names written down uh, would you guys also be interested in maybe getting Sour Fang on here? Oh, dude, yeah, you interviewed that guy, didn't you? Mm hmm. It's a shame he doesn't have any more work coming up <laughs> for WoW. Well. Hey, you do, you never know. We might uh, see him. I think he'll be in Shadowlands. You never know. I think he will be in yeah. Shadowlands. But speaking of Shadowlands, I guess if we were to segue correctly, yeah. uh, Shadowlands oh, yeah. Alpha. I don't know if anyone's heard about that. Here we go. Yeah, 100% confirmed go. for tomorrow. My dad works for Blizzard. So, can't wait. It's going to be really good. Jumping in Shadowlands tomorrow. Um, yep, good times. But no, uh, yeah, so Shadowlands Alpha obviously been a little bit of a fun little hype thing that's been coming up. So, ever since like last th a week, Thursday, uh, February 20, um, 20th, the encrypted bill came up on the, uh, on the WoW Dev CDN, and uh, that'll stay encrypted until forever, until they move it over to a different CDN, which is the WoW Beta CDN. But uh, there's been, it's all been very fun, like kind of weird. Like there's been some random yeah. accounts that got flagged for Alpha. I don't know if you saw anything on Twitter. Uh, like random yeah. people had like Alpha on their launcher, but they couldn't get into it because they need an encryption code. Um, it's super weird. I don't know why it's happening. And um, yeah, weird. But hopefully like the Alpha, I mean, it's so funny. Like I get, so like today, like Towley and Preach took the day off and people were like dude <laughs> tally and preacher off it's happening tomorrow confirmed like no it's there's like, probably some secret every... meeting dude there's a secret this, meeting dude, at blizzard's headquarters that is literally the rumor there's some some apparently a summit happening uh this week um is is apparently there's a summit at irvine allegedly so i can't wait to go flying out to irvine yeah. tomorrow it's gonna be really fun <laughs> i just imagined you like packing up like just go in there with like binocular stuff and just try to like scout it all out and get all the information you can. 
Yeah, it is, it is funny, and it's so funny as well because people are like, oh, dude, yeah, Tally just confirmed a uh, whatever. Like, Tally, I watched the clips, and he's so, like, he just bounces around it, right? He's The dude's, like, a thousand IQ market genius, right? So he would just say, like, yeah, you know, it's happening. With, it, the actual term he used was in, he goes, it's going to be within the next one to three weeks. That's 21 days it could happen in. I could say that. I could be like, oh, dude, it's happening. Yeah. It's happening in three, like up to three weeks. And people would be like, what? <laughs> it's uh, it's brilliant. It is. But no, yeah, I, if, you I, say, I, if you say it like that, of course. I Wow, I'm really out folks now. I definitely think it's going to be soon. See, if you want to be really, you know, someone at you, you can just say it like this. That way you don't have to give any type of time period. You're just like, it's coming soon. TM. Ish. No, ish. You say ish. Because it's not really saying it's like how far away it is, how close it is. It's ish. It's a, you it's need a, to get your. It's an interesting one. Channel. I definitely, I'm really excited for it. And I think that way. the hype at the moment is super high. What are you doing, man? I was gonna laugh at your blur, and I said it's at the wrong. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're Sorry, laugh at you me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I will fix it made, my camera. Made no sense at all. Yeah. If anyone knows anyone in Elgato, hook your boy up with a cam link, please. I want one. Um, but no, um, I think it's going to be soon. I think maybe we might be able to see some of the first data mining happening this week, potentially, if we do get a, a data mineable build. What happened with BFA, um, was that we ended up having a build, which was just data mineable. Essentially, it wasn't a, it wasn't a client that actually ran, but it had all the data. So Wowhead kind of started off the hype train, MMO champion, etc. kind of started data mining and getting all sorts of bits and pieces out of it. And, um, and then uh, eventually, I think it was like a week or so later, we ended up having a build that we could actually log into. Uh, but I think that was like kind of genius on Blizzard's part where they had like a week of just people digging into this data and showing you models and all sorts of stuff like that. So I think it will probably have a similar sort of situation happening with the Shadowlands thing where like we'll have a like Wowhead one day will just be like, yo boys, it's time, you know, and they just open the floodgates for absolutely everything. Um, and I was speaking about this earlier. It's, it's funny because... I remember when the sh when BFA Alpha launched, or when when the files started coming out, the most hype thing out of all of it for me and a lot of other people was just the fact that there was a long boy in the game. Just like the existence of the long boy was like the most hype thing. And uh, yeah, I really want. I I don't know what. Obviously, we don't know what it is for Shadowlands, but I feel like there's gonna be one thing in the Shadowlands data that people are gonna be like, "Holy shit, dude! There's like a cat mount. No, like a, like I don't know. Or <laughs> <laughs> well, there's there's like a kangaroo mount, boys. I, I don't even know what to think. Like, <laughs> so no, I mean, blurry. Like, you know, maybe you know, putting in a multi like flying mount, like a multi person flying mount, like that's more than just the extra one, right? Oh, like, like something people. along. Yeah, you could fit two, maybe three. I mean, we already technically have that with the like grave a Boeing, mine or the hive mine or whatever. Be like a Boeing one, 747 but, but, just flying about but, Shadowlands. <laughs> yeah, Boeing. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. No, it's gonna be like uh, it's gonna be like some type of flying spirit looking thing I'm again. You, there's gonna be one thing that day that people are gonna be like losing their mind over. The one thing I'm super excited for, and it's like really specific. It's not that specific. It's like the new Bolvar model. I really want to see what it looks like. I think it's going to look really great because uh, we're going to be seeing it a lot. He's going to be like our Magni of Shadowlands, I think. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to that. I, there's so many different things with Shadowlands that are like super exciting. I think um, uh, uh, Josh alluded to it about the, the level squish obviously being like a huge thing. Um, like going down to level 50 is going to be kind of massive. And like the way the leveling, zone and stuff. yeah, the way that leveling's changing as well is <coughs> kind, of, kind of interesting. Where you get to play an entire expansion if you want to. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it for sure. Um, I'm really, I think, I'm really more interested in the you know Tor Torghast, you know, for the armor oh, piece yeah. because um, when jo cause again reference back with Josh because Josh mentioned that we when we ran to uh, you know Johnny Cash right who he does he's a quest designer for mm -hmm. World of Warcraft. Um, and one of the things that, you know, that we were talking about, cause we were talking about uh, a little bit of like, you know, paladin lore, because, um, th just for people to know this, uh, one of the guys who originally, the guy who originally wrote the Ashbringer lore, um, his name is Mickey Nielsen. Uh, he used to be one of like the lead, one of the lead writers for World of Warcraft, uh, Blizzard. Now he's a freelance writer. Um, so I know he still does some stuff for Blizzard sometimes, but, uh, he worked with Johnny Cash and I was, and I was talking with him and, and I talked with Mickey before I've interviewed him before. And I was kind of asking about this kind of concept. Uh, and I said, like, if you're allowed to say, has there ever been a concept? Because, you know, like, one thing that we all wonder, like, is I think the biggest thing for from Legion to BFA is 
we had the most powerful weapons of of lore, right? In the lore, like we had the most powerful weapons. What is the next step after this, right? Now, the necklace thing doesn't really feel like something that's powerful. And I asked, have you guys ever explored maybe the concept of the the heroes forging uh, said item? You know, forging the the item of lore. You know, mm-hmm. that's something. Mm-hmm. You know, that we create the next Ashbringer. We create, you know, the next Atish. We create the next Frostmourne. And um, he said, well, there, he, you know, he didn't say there was a, like, really a concept for it, but, you know, like, hey, <laughs> like, he, this is what uh, Mickey said. They might, you know, something they might take in the future. But um, talking with Johnny Cash about it now, he said, oh, that's kind of something in a concept we have with, with the armor kind of for Torque House. Um, because you know you're going to be able to customize it in certain ways. <laughs> and such sorry, a... to... what did you just call it? Torghast was it? Uh, Torghouse, it whatever. Torghouse. Tor- 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 I can't pronounce it. I don't Let's go. Like to the it. It's me, Torghast. <laughs> the Torghast. We'll call it the Torghast. There you go. Torghast. No, you're you're tor- no, you're right. That that is something they alluded to. That it well, the armor's going to yeah. be like legendary and stuff like that. Well, you they did say it was legendary armor that you craft. Yeah. Um. But I, I feel like the designing weapons. will probably be similar so, to like Arthur's uh, stuff. But does that mean also that we, because I mean, obviously we're not going to have the Azerite necklace anymore. Are they going to continue with the something similar to the Azerite system of you choose your abilities? Or are we going to see something just based stats and the other armor pieces? That's what I'm up. a little more curious about. Dude, it, look, th- this is my thing, right? As an old school player, and I'm sure Martin can agree here, like. WoW had its peak subs in vanilla, Wrath, and TBC, right? Yeah. And you could look, and, and the one, the biggest thing for me, out of all of everything that's happened in the last couple of years of WoW, like, there's been some good, there's been some bad, is that in Classic WoW, you can look at an item, and you can look at the item that you just received, and you will know that that is an upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's literally it. Yes. I don't have to run it through some third-party site, Simulate or I have to, like, it. ask a, it's, like, all of that, like, even, like, up to Wrath, like when they had a few more stats in there, you could still, like, basic, like, very basic knowledge just to understand, like, what is an upgrade and what isn't. And I feel like with things like Azerite Armor, where it just got so complicated with, like, different abilities that you'd get from the Azerite Armor, it just got kind of weird in that regard. It's cool cool with the customization, sort of cutting off. Like, it's cool with customization and all, but in the end, everyone's going to be running, like, the same build because, yeah, you you want to mean max, right? And optimize. Exactly. I think they should just pull it back and, and, you know... You don't need a you don't need a heart of Azeroth stuff. You know you don't need essences. Right. You don't need Azerite armor. Maybe tier sets at a push. You know if you do do armor sets or like small armor sets that kind of join up together, like two two to two or three pieces or whatever. But like I don't know. It's just one of those things where gearing is in a weird spot in in Battle for Azeroth um, for sure. Like especially with simming. Like even since like I probably say like because I'm I'm not even like I'm just a filthy casual at the end of the day. But like even. As a filthy casual, I've been simming my gear probably since Legion, and uh, it was just something I never even thought about. You know, it was it's just a strange thing. So I kind of hope they, because one thing they didn't talk about at all, really, at, at BlizzCon was gearing and how gearing will work in Shadowlands. Uh, mm-hmm. I think at that time they didn't really know. Um, obviously now they're probably fleshed out, and we'll we'll obviously find out find out as soon as we start day mining or whatever when that day it comes out. But I'm I'm hoping they've kind of you know, drawn it back to a to an older time where it's a lot a lot more simple. Uh for sure. But... Legendary. Yeah, well, they're, they're doing legend they're doing legendaries. There is the yeah, yeah, yeah. That, but there's so no Heart of Azeroth, there's no artifact, there's no yeah. expansion based system as we know right now. There's the anima system, which we it's a bit of a mystery. Um they have to just yeah, that's like something that will have anima power, let's say, AP different effects, abilities and stuff like that. Yeah, but we'll uh, we'll definitely see. I mean the big the biggest thing obviously is Covenants with their um they'll have two abilities. They have a movement ability, they also have a class based ability. There'll be four covenants um my worry with that and i i guess it's something they could never avoid could never deal with or like uh, like avoid i guess is is that there will be a meta for each class every class as much as you want it like an aesthetically thing you'd be like yo dudes i want to go with the vampires you'd be like yeah for like a dk you want to go vampire if you want to be like a cool vampire dude that's fine but if you you know let's say it'll probably end up be like yeah you could be a vampire dude but if you want to raid you got to go with the the blue dudes you know, because you need to have that ability because it'll be your, uh, you know, you'll be semi-higher with that. But 
Um, there's also like the Soulbind system yeah. as well, which is super convoluted as well. Yeah, but... you, you might even need... Uh, because switching from Covenants, uh, have, have they released like a lot of info uh, on that? So it, they said it will like be real easy, possible, right? but it's not easy. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. Ima Something imagine in the like, race to world first races where you, uh, if, you, if you have two Covenants that's like really good that you need, then all of a sudden you might need two of the same character, level them up, and like have them in uh, different covenants. So, like, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if that if that came down to it. I where, think that like, could you happen. have like two paladins, yeah. you have yep. like one that has like his best PvP covenant, and then the other one will have his best PvE covenant. Yeah, yeah I'm worried That's, about that. That would be real bad game design. <laughs> like if it does end up like that. <laughs> um, so I mean, hopefully that's that's. I mean, I, I selfishly want a long period of testing for Shadowlands for them to really kind of see to get to let people get into it, and my biggest request for the shadowlands alpha is to make it more of a test environment in regards to like letting people switch between covenants if you wanted to just like fr from an npc right be like yo let's test out this covenant with this class sort of thing um and obviously it won't be that like that when it releases but it's a test environment at the end of the day it's alpha or beta it's testing you know you, you want to get people poking around and and doing whatever because bfa had a load of testing but you know it ended up as it is yeah i think there's also like you know a lot to think about with that because we we didn't really get to see too much of anything uh, during the you know the test that we got to have during blizzcon mm -hmm. i mean the content that we got to try i mean i understand you know it, it was very early it, it was just too lackluster in my opinion um it, i was playing out the play of it? So I, I i actually was lucky enough to be able to stream it for like two and a half hours um um and... I poked around. I want to. I want to say I did a little uh, about a bit over an hour because I was testing out like everything, you know, to, with the classes and such. Like obviously, the first thing I wanted to try out, of course, was you know playing a Death Knight because I was so hyped off the trailer and everything like that. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. Like I want to stay hopeful about it, but the trailer itself and all the information they gave us at BlizzCon, it just felt too empty compared to what we've seen in the past, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's, it's, that's fair to say, you know, we, you know, there was even some speculation from other people saying, like, other content creators, they say, hey, maybe we're probably going to see possibly another another class, you know, add on to, like, for, for races in here. Mm -hmm. Or we may see, you know, an actual more, well, more allied race. I think it might be honestly safe to say that allied races is probably going to make a comeback, given that the, you know, the covenants are using, you know, based off the, have a base model. Like, I mean, you have the, the Arden Wield are literally the, uh, or whatever, I don't know if they're actually... Based off uh, the Arden Wield or based off Draenei, Draenei, female Draenei. Draenei. Yeah. And then you have the, um, the what's it called? God, the the vampire ones. Venthyr. The Venthyr, definitely based off of uh, the Blood Elf, no, no, uh, Nightborn, Nightborn, Night Elves, and such like that. Um, and then, of course, it looks like Kul Tiran almost models for the... Um, God, I can't even think of their names. Uh, the faction so you, names. So you got the uh, the Bastion people. They're called the Bastion. Uh, the Bastion. The ones. zone is called Bastion, but the the yes. covenant is called Christ. I can't remember the spirit healer one. Yeah, actually, I can't remember. We were trying to put our finger on what they were based off. I think they're based off Vikal, but so they have custom like... innovations. Yeah. Well. Yeah. But even so, like it's Vikrul. Kyrians. Uh, Kyrians. Thank you. Thank you, Snack. Kyrian Necrolord. So, so I mean, Necrolord. they kind of look very. The boys. Yeah, the Necro Lords, of course, are probably the ones that look the most, I think, unique, at least from what we've seen. Yeah. Um, the Owlkins. No, that's the <laughs> that's dude. the like cute little steward things. The uh, the owls, dude. They are like, oh man, they're the best thing. Like when I was streaming it, I couldn't stop looking at them. Just the way that they kind of walk around was just incredible. Like they are, they are the greatest part of um, of of Shadowlands. Don't at me. Let me uh, let me pop up a swole kings, here. dude. They they are incredible. Um, let me have a little look here. Let me press that button. You you already know that they're gonna have like a battle pet like for that. Like oh, everyone's yeah. gonna want to go for that thing too. Absolutely, absolutely, of course. Oh, do they, Adam? I did not pay attention to that. Thank you. Yeah, Adam says that the Nippers use the Vandalari models. Uh, they do. Yeah, true. Um, so I mean, oh. it wouldn't be too far fetched for them to bring that back. Yeah, they're kind of cool looking. Um, but the so, but here's the thing with that: like <laughs> these guys, the uh, you know the Bastion, the the, the Kyrians, the Venthyr, whatever, they're all de designate. <laughs> I can't even freaking say the word. 
Dezen... Why can I not say that? They live in the Shadowlands, alright? They live in the Shadowlands. Can they leave the Shadowlands? I don't think so. That's uh... why I don't think they can be all allied races, because I don't think those residents of the Shadowlands... Because they're not dead. These 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 uh, people that live there and the creatures that live there are not dead, per se. Um, yeah. They just live there. But I don't think they can leave. Like, I don't think you're going to see a Venthyr just wandering around Stormwind, you know? Well, but, but here's the thing, though. Because the way the narrative can change to that is that... So, and this is, again, this is, like, one of those, like, tinfoil kind of thing, theories, right? That kind of jumping forward. I mean, there could be something that's going to happen in Shadowlands where, you know... Because I, I think the biggest thing for Shadowlands is, for, for a lot of fans, too, is Death Knights having a real tie-in to the lore, right? Um, because pretty much... For the most part, after Wrath, like Death Knight, if you were a Death Knight uh, fan, like I'll say right now, I don't, I don't get into the the whole roleplay thing like like people do on RP servers. But I love lore. I do love lore a lot in this game, and Death Knights don't really have much of a duty, you know, after killing the Lich King, right? The next thing is, of course, in Legion, where now you are working with the new Lich King, kind of you're now serving under him. The new and you raise the new, you know, um, four horsemen, such, and it kind of gives you that sense of like yes these guys have to do something so what if like we have this thing I, and i, and I want to say um i think it was nixian that even talked uh was talking about this in one of his videos before mm -hmm. where what if now in like maybe at say the end of this expansion like the new purpose of the death knights right is to like be the wardens um within this realm right or of the realm of that world right so let's say that there are ways for the from the denizens of that you know realm to come into the living world yeah yeah it's but, uh, have you played the uh the new death knight starting zone i could uh, i could have cried it was so disappointing it, it was disappointing but i'm saying that i think i'm saying what in the terms of the narrative though i mean that's how they can bring in like the other races you know it's like hey now the spirits are free to wander back into the and, and that's a way of bringing characters back to life if you think about it too like bringing them back from that realm yeah i mean i, uh, it, I so, yep words so i think Plot. once uh once we see uh the first amount of day mining we'll see we'll understand the limitations of those models and how what they're based off and if they can support gear as such because you have models like the sethrak who can they don't support gear so you look at a cat you look at a race and uh, the way the blizzard kind of do rate like allied races specifically now uh is that if they're based off something like so say for example like the Maghar orcs obviously based off the orcs so all their gear is already made it's just a case for them to bring it in uh with something like called tyrans they had to kind of change a lot of stuff it's it's a little bit more technical but like essentially we'll have a better understanding whether or not these uh races will become an allied race in that first build because the way that they've created those those models to work um and we kind of saw that with volpira so when volpira first came into the game uh, they were able to support gear straight away because they were using the goblin models. Um, so instantly, you know, anything like that, you just kind of go, right, that's going to be an allied race. And obviously we saw it come as an allied race in 8.3, but essentially that that model was pretty much ready to go from 8.0. Uh, they just kind of bided their time with it. So, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind it. I mean, it'll be four extra races, though. Like, how many, how many races do we have in WoW now? Like, it's getting kind of out of control. Uh, especially I with, mean, I mean, and, and a big thing of Sea of Shadowlands is, is the customization stuff. They're doing a ton of stuff for customization. Uh, they're bringing in, obviously, the new, um, like, human faces, the, the troll skins and, and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, it's it's going to be an interesting time. I, I wonder, if, I don't, I don't think, if they are going to bring back, okay, this is my, this is my quote, and you can quote me this in a couple years. I, if they don't, if they don't bring back Allied Races... They, I don't think they're going to bring it back till the last patch of Shadowlands. That's, that's my, fair. That's my theory. I, I think that's fair. Yeah, I don't think they're going to bring it back till the last patch, but because they're doing the customization stuff. I mean, you've got like Wild Hammer Dwarves with their new tat. No, no, like dwarves are getting tattoos and bits like that to look like Wild Hammer Dwarves. You're getting humans to have like different, um, different faces and stuff. Uh, which look way more detailed and really, really great, honestly. Uh, and Undeads are getting a ton of work done to them, and there's, like, so much other stuff, you know. Obviously, Blood Elves will be getting stuff done, and other races as well. So it's uh, 
I'm excited for, for that sort of stuff. Like, one of the most exciting features for me, I, I, even if it's not really a feature, <laughs> is just the new customization stuff, because it's just better, honestly. Well, I think it breathes life back into the game for a lot of sense, because, you know, compared to a lot of other MMOs out there, too, like, unfortunately, you know, WoW has definitely fallen behind in terms of the the character customization freedom obviously you know we don't want something like black you know desert online kind of like <laughs> stuff for everything you know i've never um, played that ever oh you can just make the most crazy stuff yeah you can you can make like go a and say yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah you can make people are made, sliders like, any game with sliders is always yeah amazing. yeah exactly for everything for everything you can do yeah I, mean, I don't think anyone's going to be like, hey, I want a I wanna six-foot-tall dwarf, please. <laughs> it's not That's dwarf amazing. Anymore, then. It's, yeah, it can only be a good thing. I mean, like, looking at WoW, like, customization of characters hasn't really changed since 2004. Uh, yeah. We've seen the models change, obviously, in Warlords of Draenor, but beyond that, like, we haven't had a ton of new stuff kind of pop up. And uh, it's, it's fallen behind in the times, as you said, like, um, Black Desert obviously has, like, a pretty deep customization eso also another one that has like a pretty decent amount of customization in your characters and i th i think with an mmo being uh having your character kind of be like an extension of yourself or be like unique, unique is kind of yeah. great to have um i mean when you're all running around you're like oh you're a gnome but like as soon as you put gear on you're just the gnome right you're not like you know this and there's only a certain amount of hair and face options that you can use and everyone just kind of ends up looking the same which is kind of a shame um but but as you said with black desert i mean from the sounds of it that's like the extreme <laughs> like because no doubt there's people running around with the most extreme like figures like ever right like massive everything and it just... becomes a joke at that point right you, you just yeah. make it as silly as you can because you can you don't really make like your unique characters yeah. like represent yourself or anything you just make like uh, something with green hair and, like a really big nose and, like big chin and like paint yourself with like you, you could do like makeup and stuff as well i think and uh mm -hmm. uh, in black desert stuff but no well, personally like i've never really been into like customization that much mm -hmm. um i'm more of like you know the old school the gear you get um um like represents your character uh tbc gear leveling gear <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> looking was, like a clown it was like recolored uh, tier one but it was all like the most ridiculous colors yeah but i mean i i, I love that i liked it back then i mean still i now playing bfa i run around with trans smoke you know yeah of course right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> of course yeah I, I put on the uh i'm a rogue and i put on like paladin make, make myself look like paladin to uh, embrace the paladin lifestyle and get loot mm-hmm uh, yeah, I'm um, a bit superstitious in that regard. I'd be interested to see some more um, variation of like stuff for for the races too, in terms of like you know like full on different like you know kind of like allied race stuff, like how he did with like Dark Iron and stuff like that. I mean, I'm not sure if you guys. Well, I think I've told. I know. No, I've told you this story, Dan. I don't think it, Martin knows the story. So did you know that at one point we could have possibly had polar bears instead of Pandarans? What? Yeah. So like, you, this, you're just straight up polar bears, like polar bear, like like a polar bear race. We could have had that at one yeah, point. Really? So so um, like a League what, of Legends of, volley bear kind of. Yeah. So oh no, definitely. So um, what one of the well, most well known artists at Blizzard Entertainment, uh, his name is Sam Wise Didier, um, very talented artist. Uh, you guys may know him as the voice of Samuro in maybe in Heroes of the Storm. Uh, he's also the lead singer of the Elite Torn Chieftains, but he, he's also the guy that did like majority of the you know, art that you'd see for a lot of Blizzard art. Um, like he's one of the main guys to go to. Um, and I I got to interview. He was the very first guy I ever interviewed for my podcast. And one of the stories because he goes by the name Panda King, and I never knew why like you know why did they call you panda king you know what was the whole story of that turns out he's the guy that created the pandarans like he's the one that drew them down and created them for for blizzard right mm -hmm. so this is how that happened <laughs> so um what ended up happening was he him and his friends uh one would go out to big bear a little camping area and such and um uh, one day while they were camping out there it got really cold they had a few drinks a couple of them were drunk and, uh, you know, they had a the fire going, but Sam doesn't want to get near too close to the fire. He, you know, he wants to cool off a bit. So he's sitting away from the fire and one of his friends was really drunk and it was like, Hey man, like you don't want to come sit by the fire. It's like cold as hell out here. It's like, nah, man, I don't want to, it's too hot. 
It's like, wow, man, like you, you like the cold or something? What are you, like a panda bear? And then he's like, wait, you mean a polar bear? And his friend was like, ah, panda bear, polar bear, same thing. <laughs> but from that day on, he was he was called Panda because the the you know the drunk moment uh, right there at big at Big Bear, um, and that kind of followed him. And of course, he would draw these drawings. You know, his daughter loved the pandas too, and you know, eventually, that was something that kind of like was put in Warcraft Three. But here's something cool. So he's still he's still at Blizzard, and you know, I'm, I'm I'm okay with telling the story. But he did a um an, a book uh, a while ago called uh, The Last Winter, and this is like a little glimpse. Yeah, of this. If, Dan, if you want to like find a picture of this too, you can show up. Well, what we could the, have probably the first had. That he drew. Is that Thunder Fury? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> the Thunder Fury? <laughs> yeah. If you want to show something like that on the screen, though, but this is like a glimpse into maybe something that we could have had. And and again, pandas make a reference in this book. They're called the Pandir, and they're like a Viking panda race. It's actually pretty uh, sick. It's actually pretty cool. So, but, he... like, it's one of those things of what ifs. Didn't he draw? So it all kind of started. He drew an image of a Pandaren, like samurai, right? If I'm not mistaken. It was like yeah. It was, it was two like a, yeah. Hang on, I think I've. Let me see if I can find it. I thought it was just a straight up idea from like Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> no, now no, here's it, it was before that. <laughs> but when you no. saw the trailer, it was like, oh yeah, this is like like Kung Fu Panda stuff. So, um, funny thing. So we um. So me and Sam, we we he won. He, we started doing a metal podcast together. We talk about metal music, uh, and he was talking about when uh, Jack Black, you know, Tenacious D, oh. was performing. And you see, there's there's Lily, a little early Lily right there on on the panda art. Mm. Um, when Jack Black and Tenacious D basically performed at BlizzCon, right? So this is you know with you know Pandaria kind of being announced. So um, they're backstage and, and they give Jack Black one of the Pandarans. And Jack Black, you know, being the funny guy he is, he's like, ooh, I smell a lawsuit. And then uh, Pandaria was like, you know, Sam was like, actually, you know, we created these back, you know, in, you know, 2001 or whatever. Something like that, right? And he's like, oh, never mind. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's funny because a lot of people actually think that this was, you know, from the popularity of Kung Fu Panda, but it started with literally a drunk it was joke. In, it was in Warcraft Frames. Yeah. I, yeah, I, Warcraft 3. Oh, true. I, I, I just Googled as well. Like, Kung Fu Panda came out 2012, first one. Uh, yeah. No, it wasn't. Was it really 2012? Uh, hold on. Uh, Kung, I, I just Googled Kung Fu Panda release. It's 2008. Very... Oh, 2008. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Miss of Padaria was 2011. Uh, oh, yeah. So it, so it, so it did come, come before. Yeah, I just yeah but Pandarans were always in... Uh, they were always in Warcraft 3. Okay. Yeah. And then yeah, uh, yeah. the collector's yeah, edition from Classic had... Um, from Vanilla WoW had a panda pet as well, and there was a panda uh, and, like monk pet that you could get, like a battle pet. Yeah, um, there was a few bits of pieces, but the pan- it was um, Chen was part of the the, the storyline for the founding of uh, of Ogremar and everything. Mm-hmm. All right, wow trivia. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've we got have like twenty five minutes left. I actually, yeah, I think. Maybe we should save the trivia for like another week. We'll get like yeah, like I have a lot of. It's really hard making up questions. Like obviously, I've I've been I've (laughs) been like guys. I've been scouring for like questions on the net, uh, finding good ones, customizing them. Um, But I think we'd like it'd be better with three people, like having a three person. Yeah, like like, bringing a guest on because because we we wanna we wanna do like a hall of fame as well. Like bring the guests on, like trivia them, and then uh, see how many. Yeah. uh, Yeah. See. um, uh, So. What score they'll get? Like just maybe make like a little I got, cap. I got a plan B. Uh, yeah. I got a plan B. Oh, so Jay, uh, I heard a rumor um, that you can play guitar. Oh God! Please, <laughs> I haven't. I haven't heard. I I I think oh. I think I watched a YouTube video a little bit after um uh, when I first like introduced you. <laughs> yeah, I can play guitar. I don't know, chat chat. Has anyone ever heard Jay play guitar ever? I don't know if he. I don't know if you can still oh, do it. I don't know God. if you still got it in you to, to it's do it. It's standing right there. You don't even need to... Yeah. <laughs> it's always just an arms arms reach away. Yep. Come on, Jay. Uh, it's, up to, it's up to chat, okay? It's the up to chat. The moment we've all been waiting for. Bookmark, <laughs> Dorif. Look, come on, dude. This is it. Bookmark. Bookmark. Oh, man. Let me get all cozy. Right, yeah. Let's get cozy, chat. Cozy? Getting cozy. 
Everybody get cozy. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Okay, okay. I swear Fine. there was a, a TV show on Netflix that had a song in it from a bard. I can't remember what it was called. I don't know. Do you, do you remember that one, Jay? Oh, you mean uh, that one show? Yeah, I don't know. Uh. All right. Do you get? Do you guys want a wow? Do you guys want a wow song? Of course. Okay. God dang it, Dan. Everyone remember for this moment. <laughs> yeah. Come take a drink at the Lion's Pride Inn. Come feast at our table, let our stories begin. Come rest your feet before you storm off and hear my tales in Nazareth. Tales of enchantment, of magic and war. Stories of the Alliance and the glory of the Horde. They brought down the Lich King and then they slayed Deathwing. Though it ends, the quest will go on. Remember those who fell at the Wrath Gate and those who stood in the fire. So cozy. For the souls that we lost in Theramore. From that crater of Jaina's ire. Now we traveled through the wastelands of Northrend, and now we've ended Kill Jaden's campaign. But on Argus we see light our destiny to end Sarg's reign. Now we drink and unite. We'll never give up the fight. And we'll sing all our tales under the Method Tavern lights. But now my song is over. It's come to an end. At least. Until the next time I see you, my friend. There it is. There it is. We've been waiting all day for that. Like an hour, two, two hours and 40 minutes. So was it, don't, yeah. put, don't put it down. Oh my! God. Really? <laughs> that, that, this is the content you're planning on. You didn't even tell me. You're yeah, because I get to sit there for a couple of minutes, not saying anything. Yeah, <laughs> we baited you with a trivia, but just the trivia. <laughs> Some of guys, I love how you... trivia, but th this was the goal. <laughs> Some of guys, I, lo I love how you didn't include Ward. <laughs> <laughs> well, so <laughs> we don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Maybe one of these days I'll make like a like a shanty for like like on the, for the method for this method channel, but like this, like, well, the tide of the battle has shifted. Now our hopes are falling down. One name rings over the mountain. Now that method has joined the fight. With a mighty huzzah, the battle is won. The pints on Sco tonight. When the darkness comes to surround us, stand back and don't lose faith. For the name rings over the mountain, now that Skull has joined the fight. With a mighty huzzah, the battle is won, the pints are on him tonight. Nice. Am I so, allowed to put it down now? I love that one. You should, uh, you should do toss a coin to your Witcher, but... Mine toss, per, a, toss a prime to your streamer. Yeah. Any prime primers? Any gifters? 
Mm -hmm. Do we Jay. have any gifters? Think of it. Yeah, if we get one Twitch Prime, Jay will make it up on the spot. If we can get, I'll tell you what, if we can get two, we get two, two? gifted Twitch, yeah, two, two, two gifted uh, Twitch uh, subs, I will do toss a coin to your Witcher. Oh, that was good as well. Toss a prime to your Twitcher. Toss a prime to your Twitcher. Oh, that was good act as well. Let me plug this in, actually. Hold on. Ugh. Oh, gee. Oh, you have, uh, you have oh of course. Of course, Dan. Of course. <laughs> I, should have said, I should have said no one from Methods allowed to gift anything. No, but Dan's... Yeah, I'm not a Methods, son. <laughs> it's not yeah. a Method. It doesn't count. If I would do it, okay, then it would count. Yeah. Just do it, Jay. Just okay. Just okay, hold on. I gotta pull up the sheet music really quick. Hold on. The sheet music? Yeah, I don't remember it by heart, man. I'm so disappointed. Uh, I thought you just did it off the top of your head. You think that we just know everything. Like, oh, hey, play Wonderwall, Jay. You should. It's Wonderwall. You should, <laughs> should play Wonderwall. <laughs> oh, there it is. T1, Twitch Prime. Oh. Midnight. With oh, the Twitch oh. Prime. double two. Midnight with the... Okay, dang it. Okay, guys, here you go. I'm sorry if I don't do this as well as you probably, as much as Dan is hyping it up to be. Um, I'm excited. Hold on. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just trying to find my, like, thing. I have, like, a whole, like, folder, like, for everything, like, this kind of stuff. So it's, like, uh, just I think it's it. in my tavern. No, uh, there's a specific, Okay. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I'm in cozy mode already. Okay, hold on. Here we go. Cozy. Let's get cozy. All right, here you guys go. Thank you, Midnight and Dan, for making me do and this. Treble and Treble ga Gaming. And Treble. All right. <clears throat> when a humble bar raced the ride along with Mr. GM and Martin Creek, along came this song. When the white wolf fought a silver tongued devil, his army of bells at his hoofs the day revel. They came after me with masterful deceit. They broke down my loot and they kicked in my teeth while the devil's horns making star tender meat. And so cried the witcher, he can't be bleed. Toss a sub to your streamers, oh Twitch stream of plenty, oh Twitch stream of plenty, whoa. Touch a sub to your streamers, oh Twitch stream of plenty. of the world see the mighty skull doing his push-ups right on the floor Dan is gonna go and make a video at 10 minutes long cause you know how that goes then Martin Creek will go up I can't do this anymore. Oh. Something. I can't do the rest of this, guys. I can't That's do the rest great, of this. Dude. You tried. You tried. You tried. That was like. Great. That was, was like so a. Great. It was like a two out of ten. No, it was pretty crap. You even made Dan go blurry again. Yeah, you made me. <laughs> look, I'm. I'm. I'm drunk again. Frick. Yeah. <laughs> Push up in. <laughs> you need an emote, Dan, which is just like a blur. Just a blurry face. face yeah. Yeah. Blurry. Uh, God, I can't believe it. <laughs> no warm ups whatsoever. I feel that was fantastic. It was real good. I loved yeah. it. <laughs> I like doing the. I think the one I always like. The only one I'm always ready for is like when people want like the classic WoW parody one. Because I have like the guitar all pre recorded for that stuff. Oh, for which one? What yeah, tell, tell me more about the song. Uh, uh, for Journey Home? I think, I think this guy named Mr. GM and Adam Schwagens helped me do the, you know, helped me work on it, you know, quite a bit. If I if I play the video, do you think you could line up the audio? 
I don't think I could do it like that because it would still delay. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> the the audio that's record that's been recorded for the the new version. Mine. Have uh, you ever heard of Jay's song called Journey Home? No. It's quite good. It's all right. It's like eh, you know, it's all right. This is how you want to film the raining content. You're gonna do this to me. <laughs> we have about seven minutes. <sighs> Only if Bookmark wants it. If Bookmark wants it to happen, I'll make it happen. There I've seen it. Yeah. Bookmark. Bookmark. <laughs> Every time the letters get less and less, it just turns into a noise. By the, by the end, you're like, <laughs> oh. oh, see nothing. I. Oh well, at least we tried. He tried. He tried. We tried our best. Nope. Nope. No it's bookmark. okay. It's no okay. Bookmark. Oh. 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 It wants, it, wants oh, it out. Oh, it oh, okay. Hey. Well, uh, this one I don't have to play my guitar at least, so I don't have to like plug it back in. You're okay. a bit loud on the last one. I don't know if you could turn yourself down. Because uh, I was plugged in the. I was plugged in the. Uh -huh. with, you can mm, do this well on Discord, can't you? Like right click and distract. Down. Yeah. Hold on. It was just a peaky boy. That's all it was. No, I mean, I mean, Mr. G. I mean, Mr. GM could do it. All right, this is the last one. Did someone say? Did somebody just say Thunder Fury? Did somebody say Thunder Fury? It's me. Did someone say? Oh, Thunder Fury, Blessed Blade of the Wind Sea. Yo, can you guys shut the fuck up? Continue, Jay. Thank you, McConnell. Really appreciate it every time. Where was I? Oh yeah. <clears throat> Come on, let's go. Journey. No, I recognize the uh, the last part. So I'm, I may have caught it like on a stream somewhere, uh, where someone played it, but I didn't connect it to Jay actually at all. He's the only person in the WoW community yeah. that sings, so it's it's kind of a dead giveaway. Well, actually, no, that's a lie. There is a few more. Is it? But yeah, yeah, there you go. So that's yeah. Jay's little uh, song. Pro proper singing though. There's a lot of meme stuff out there, but Jay does the proper singing. The real singing, the journey home oh, singing. No, real, yeah. I, I, I love messing around with meme stuff. Like there's times where me and Dan will just sit, like together in Discord, and I'll just joke around. Like we were. Dan reached out to me one time. He was like, "Jay, you should do this one song called Old Town Road into a Wow parody." I'm like, "What would I freaking do? I don't know. Make it into a classic Wow song." And I was like, "It was like I'm gonna take my mount to the old crossroads. I'm gonna troll till I can't no more." I see Chuck Norris jokes in chat. Man, Crick's wife ain't back. That was some. <laughs> it would have been like, so good. Yeah, it was like it was like Chuck Norris jokes in chat. Man, Crick's wife ain't back. Ganking from a lion's tunes, making hordies mad yet. <laughs> it was stupid. <laughs> it would have been. Oh, it would around. have been so good. good. You needed to make an album. That's what you need to do. Just all, cla just all cl one for classic specifically. Just one for retail. See, Bookmark would buy it. So that's one. That's one sale. Just sell it. Like a Christmas album, you know. A Christmas album. Yeah. Already Christmas. Well, well, you know what, Bookmark? I'm just saying. Method Bard sounds really nice sometimes. <laughs> it doesn't. What do you that's, mean doesn't? No, that's that's Billy why. Billy J Cyrus. <laughs> Billy J Cyrus. <laughs> Billy, Billy J Cyrus. Oh, dude, I'm gonna introduce myself as that the next time I go to like do like a country song for like wow. Like howdy there, everybody. My name is Billy J Cyrus. This one goes <laughs> out to my good old friend over there, Andalyn and Bookmark. Shout out to the Method team. Gonna have a nice little song for you, okay? <laughs> Billy J Cyrus. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I feel like you could do so well straight because no one. Okay, so I, I, to be fair, my I have like tunnel vision with Twitch. I don't. Is there many people on Twitch sitting there with a guitar just rifting? Yes, there's a couple under creative, yeah. Um, but I don't know. Not really like gaming music in a sense. There's like that that eight bit drummer guy. Um, it's really awesome, but n nothing really like Jay, I think. But there, there, there are a bunch, I think. But look, literally, as Jay said, we've had Discord calls where he's just been throwing together songs. Like, one time, me and Adam were trying to have a conversation, and Jay just bought an electric, electric guitar, and he wouldn't stop. He literally <laughs> wouldn't stop playing with it. And he, like, I said, all right, just play Dragon Force. And he played Dragon Force. <laughs> He actually played no Dragon Force. Did he really? He, he, yeah. It, I don't know how he knew how to do it, but he did it. Um yeah, like yeah, the freaking part was just like the 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 speed part though. It wasn't like every little fast part because play on the acoustic. It's just it's nothing though. It's like this. this yeah, but on the electric, it sounds so much more epic. Yeah, electric sounds better. 
Yeah. But, I mean, I just have fun with it. Like, you know, like I like to post like the tweets on like on Twitter sometimes when like when people like when people were talking about like the cues to get in when when uh, Ultrac Valley came out, I was just like, "Hello, Warcraft, my old friend. I'm in a login queue again. I need to log and do some PvP." But this dumb server's not allowing me. <laughs> I'm good. I don't know. I, just, I, I feel like there's a market for like so method should just do method should just do like a two hour slot of you just singing like random songs. Uh, made up like taking words from chat. Yeah, just people will say a word in chat. Chat. Be, yeah. chat would just throw a song out there and you'd be like, Okay, fine. <laughs> Maybe we'll see. One day. One day. Method one day, Bard. One day. One day, method bar, dude. That's a goal. You played uh, Twitch Sings, though, didn't you? I do. Tw yeah, I do play Twitch Sings. Yeah. I wanted to do that. I had it downloaded, but I just never, never got to it. I think. It looks yeah. So fun, though. It kind of happened, and then it just kind of disappeared. <laughs> like it, it was on there for like two <laughs> weeks or something, right? Two, three weeks, and then it's gone. Jay, you're gonna send bookmark an email. Oh. Send him a little 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 message. Yeah, but uh, we'll do. We uh, we do need a well. I just have to say we need to, but we are going to wrap it up very shortly. Yeah. And I know when we were on a call before, you were mentioning about some sort of outro that you wanted to do. Oh my god, no! Oh, you're no Dan. That was just that was. You just... said it, and you you were like, dudes, we're, we're going to do this outro, <laughs> and it's going to be a good moment. This is gonna, I fucking hate. All right, well, guys, making a thing as well. It's been real. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, guys. If you haven't um, followed us on social media or wherever, I'm Mr. GM, Mr. GMYT on your Twitter, on Twitch, Mr. GM, Martin Creek, Method Creek on uh, Twitter. You'll see him. He's a verified one. And then Jay. So anyway, let's uh, just uh, <laughs> Jay the Bard TV on uh, on 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 uh, Twitter as well, and Jay the Bard on Twitch. All that good stuff. And uh, obviously, follow Method on Twitter, of course. Guys, if you want to see more of this show, this was actually the pilot episode. If you do want to see more of this and more of us and various different guests and whatever, do uh, tweet at Method or tweet at Bookmark or Andalyn saying, yes, we want more of this and we want to expand it. We want to do more of yes. it and uh, and all that good stuff. But we really appreciate you guys coming here and, uh, and hanging out and hanging out with Josh as well. Great guy. And uh, yeah, Jay is going to sing us off. As we say goodbye to everybody, please here on Twitch. understand this. This was just a concept. I didn't that I said I was working on as a joke thing to end it on. It's not. God dang it, Dan! Hey, this was really fun, and I hope you liked it too. It's like the stream had just begun, but suddenly we're through. Goodbye, goodbye, Twitch stream, goodbye. And now it's time to go. But hey, I say, well, that's okay. Cause I'll see you next stream, I hope. The very next stream, I hope. Goodbye, goodbye, Twitch stream, goodbye. And the next one will be like today. Martin and Dan and the Tavern Bard will be waiting for you to come and play. So sub away, sub today. Goodbye now. <laughs>